It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anako is here. Alex Lindsay's here. And so are the new Macs, a new monitor, a new iPhone, and a new iPad. We've got some surprises and delights from Apple's Peak Performance event coming up next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 808. Recorded Tuesday, March 8th, 2022. Surprises and delights. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Imperfect Foods. Combating climate change feels big and overwhelming, but there's an easy and delicious way to make an impact. Imperfect Foods. Right now, Imperfect Foods is offering 20% off to all of our listeners on your first four orders when you go to imperfectfoods.com and use the promo code MacBreak. And by better help give it a try and see why over two million people have used better help online therapy as a listener you'll get 10 percent off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash mac break and by new relic that next 9 p.m call is just waiting to happen get new relic before it does and you can get access to the whole new relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data free per month forever no credit card required. Sign up at newrelic.com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show we cover the latest news from Apple. And yes, there is some news. Alex Lindsay is here <laughs> from 090.media and office hours. <laughs> You smell the smoke. You smell the smoke. <laughs> it's, the, it's the credit card. It's a little hot, to, a little warm. It's a little hot. It's like, it's just, I just keep trying to keep it out of frame. I just, it's just, it's just like this little bellowing thing that's coming up out of my pan. <laughs> Uh, Andy Anako also here, WGBH in Boston. Renee getting briefed. What mm. a surprise! Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't see it on the camera, but can you see? Is like the ghost of my dad, like manifesting over my right shoulder, <laughs> telling me, "Now, now, son, you, you have two thousand dollars. You even have four thousand dollars. That doesn't mean this now is a good time to spend four thousand oh, dollars on a new Mac. Now is an excellent time to spend four thousand dollars because dad, dad, dad is very right. That's the very, that's the very sensible voice that comes in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so we are uh, still a little giddy having just come off uh, Apple's peak performance event. I will admit I was wrong. There were no VR headsets. We were not peeking at anything that's not yet out. In <laughs> fact, uh, it was it should have been PEAK performance because it was all about uh, performance. Um, we will cover it all, uh, but we might hasten through... <laughs> The first bits <laughs> to get to the really juicy uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, just thought, uh, your okay. thoughts, Andy, about the whole event. A lot of big messaging here. Uh, I've, first of all, I was a little bit surprised there was no messaging about Ukraine, although they, he, although uh, Tim Cook did ha, has made public statements in the past. Uh, I think in the past I was thinking weeks, about so that. that was and I think the reason for that is that this was pre-recorded. And the risk of pre-recording something that would be unfortunate exactly. at you know the at the last minute uh, was too high. So rather than and say anything, maybe yeah, it may have been yeah. finished before the it may have been finished before the uh, the war. Uh, all the shoot may have happened before the shoot, yeah, before exactly. the war. Yeah. But but other than that, this this was a, a lot of really great specific announcements that we're going to get into. But this was there was such cons such tidy storytelling and messaging. I thought it was super interesting that this wasn't presented as and now let's bring out so and so to talk about iPhone. Now let's talk about so and so to talk about Macintosh. This was really presented as an Apple Silicon event and saying here are three here are some expressions of how we're using Apple Silicon, uh, which I thought uh, which I thought was just just huge. The other the uh, uh, the another note since we're talking about broad stuff. Uh, Okay, bad. I'm sorry. That uh, I, I, I'm meaning. I'm, that, I was meaning now, broad. if you're going where I think you're going, that was a bad I'm choice very, of words. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry because I, I did mean what, what I'm saying. Is I did, I did notice and did appreciate that there were very, very few men uh, chosen as pre, as presenters here. Even when they did, like here's a here's a testimony, video testimonials from developers when they're talking about the the new processor. They were talking. They were all talking to uh, non male uh, developers. And it's which because it's International Women's Day today, and uh, Tim Cook Didn't every know that. year. Here, yeah. in fact, tweets that, uh, you know, celebrating women. Yep. And it was very appropriate. I noticed it too, Andy, that all the creators yep. were women. Bravo, yep. Apple. That's exactly and, and right. Also 
and also because I'm sure that we, we've been we've been doing the show for over a decade, so we we we've been through the dark some dark times. Uh, so it's it's not just that hey we found some women who are working as managers at Apple to put thrust on stage. It was no, it's just that the person who's in charge of iPhone, the person who's in charge of this, is a female executive, and so yeah. of course we chose that person. So lo- lots of well, and lots of more stuff that we'll talk to, uh, we'll, we'll get into when we get there. But yeah, I thought that it, it was it was absolutely solid gold as as a presentation so tidy they keeping their messaging on point and it once again underscores that how laser focused and precise they can be when they pre-record and pre-edit everything if you look at though uh tim cook's blue sweater and his yellow watch band there is a subtle pro-ukrainian oh, yeah. message in there so uh Good point. i i think they did in fact record this after the war broke out 12 13 days ago um I'm. I was saying at the beginning. I bet you they had Tim Cook standing by as late as last night. If he's going to mention Ukraine, he's going to yeah, be able to exactly. have to be able to modify it. So I think that that was probably wise for them just to uh, avoid it altogether. Uh, very, very changed quickly, quickly evolving situation. Yeah. If there was some sort of disaster, even later on today, that it, yeah, it, and we it, know, it, and we know uh, where they stand on it because they absolutely, stopped. Absolutely. Sell, none of these products put, will be available in Russia. So, well, and they also put the Crimea back into the Ukraine. In oh, the did they? Good for them. Yeah. is that yeah, everywhere so, or just in the U.S.? I think, I think it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Uh, All right. Well, no, not not in Russia, but not yeah, they Russia. they, oh, they, they changed. Yeah. Specifically because of, uh, they they were forced to do so. The invasion was in 2014. In 2019, they and other map makers changed it because in Russia it became against the law to represent the borders as non-Russian. And so this was your basic flipping the bird back at Russia, saying, "Okay, we don't even care anymore." They they are they are they are uh, they are uh, following the laws of the country in which that they are operating, but elsewhere it is not uh, it not as has been said a disputed region now they're saying specifically no this is this, this territory belongs to ukraine well and one way to avoid that issue is to not sell your products in that country and that's the other thing that yeah, exactly <laughs> join, uh, join the club yeah yeah, yeah uh, I, I think Alex. i think that overall I, mean, I think that the uh i have to say so i don't understand why they're using teleprompters for records you know, like I just don't. I it don't takes get a it. lot of the spontaneity out of it. Yeah, it just it, it well, and it's it's this. Every sentence has a gap. Yep. You know, now the women who presented the um, the new that was studio, genuine. yeah, they were really good because yeah, they, they were, were talking. That was some of the best presentation I've seen in a long time at an Apple yeah. keynote or almost any keynote outside of Salesforce. Salesforce trains their folks a lot harder than everybody else, and so theirs are really good. Um, but outside of that, um, Apple, you know, tends to be a little uh, stale. And, and I, and I feel like they just don't need that. They, they're pre-recording just, you know, and I know that takes time for someone to be able to do it from memory, but you only have to do it in little chunks. <laughs> you know, and so, so I, I think that, you know, I, I think that that, and I, and I have to admit that watching this, I kind of started to feel like, do we really need the, the motif of a stage anymore? Like, can we just make this a show? You know, like it, I don't. It was, you know, I, I do want to get to the, the actual products, but uh, <laughs> right. this is the meta conversation. It was interesting that they eliminated, they eschewed the production elements they had used in the past, the yeah. drone shots, the zooming around, yeah. all of that stuff. The, right. Remember, uh, for a while, we thought, oh, they're, they're now they're going to start to branch out and do bits of it from the Grand Canyon and bits of it from. Yeah. None of that. This I was thought that very, was really exciting, and I thought this one was really boring. Yeah, I don't know. Compared to why it. do you think? You think that we did this in a hurry? Uh, uh, I think that I think that they a um, I think they might be preparing to go back to a stage, you know, in the near mm. future, and they may so have thought ramp maybe, down, ramp down, may, yeah, yeah, ramp ramp it back down again, which I think is not going to work. I think that they're going to eventually have to turn back towards the production because I think that the production was great, and um, and I think that if I hadn't been watching with 150 people. Uh, on zoom i probably would have like just decided i'd wait and look at the notes you know it was just it just was it was too slow you know i think that was the thing for me uh, uh i on the other hand was hyperventilating through at least all at least all, the second half uh yeah. so i didn't feel like it was slow <laughs> yeah. at all well uh, yeah i mean once we got to the once we got to the, i mean because the thing is like stuff. we're not in office hours we're not the market for the se so yeah, we were yeah. just like okay let's go yeah, you yeah. know and then right. so <laughs> okay. so probably nobody listening is either but we're gonna so the first segment of the show we're gonna do all the boring stuff we're gonna get that out of the way <laughs> and then we're gonna get to the good stuff and actually right. i think there's a lot to be said about the ipad air uh there's some interesting really I have some powerful. questions. Yeah. yeah, I have some real questions about that. But first, they started uh, everything off with a an advertisement for Apple TV Plus, all the things they have, uh all the awards oh. they're nominated for. 
Friday night baseball. That's that the big. Cool. That's the big announcement, Which, right? They got baseball. Uh, yeah. Of course, it's going to be uh, a shortened season, uh, and uh, I think people have stopped caring about baseball by now. They only have two games exclusive to Apple TV Plus. Um, I think that the MLB was the obvious first choice because basically HLS is built around what M MLB wants. Oh, interesting. You know, like so. <laughs> That's so because thing, I remember this. This goes yeah. back to the days with Major League Baseball, who was very early on the streaming platform with ML the MLB app. Didn't they go to somebody who disappointed them, who let them down, and then they... <laughs> They came to HLS, and Apple basically has designed that HLS around what MLB wanted, and so so that that you know a lot of that pipeline is so well formed inside of the MLB pipeline, and so it's it would be I mean obviously there's some support on the app and everything else, but it's effortless from Apple's perspective, from a transmission perspective, to to carry live games from MLB because it's using exactly what Apple uses. So they went, I think, to HBO. First, though, didn't they? They might have. I you mean, remember, back in the day, this history? streaming this was eight, very. This is eight, seven, or eight years ago. They were oh, pioneers in this, and uh, yeah. I feel like they they went to one company that, and I can't remember who it and, was. And we have to remember that it was the wild, wild west before HLS. Because I mean, remember, HLS is what everybody delivers. You know, YouTube delivers your your videos in HLS. You know, so yeah. so before HLS, it was kind of the wild, wild west, and things kind of worked and kind of didn't work and everything else, and then. And then MLB, you know, um, kind of figured this out, and they started making a lot of requests, and um, they've gotten a lot of those requests. And HLS so, is HTTP live streaming. It's, yeah, uh, and this it's, is Apple's. It's, it's basically uh, free. HTML5 streaming. Yeah, uh, kind is of. That fair? Um, no, I don't. No, it's pre-exists that. You know, it, it was really, but it was an HTTP protocol, and basically, it's not streaming in the way we think of it. It's just copying files to your drive and deleting them really fast. Oh, <laughs> so, so it's okay. it's not really stream, you know, because basically what's happening is, is there's that you take um, segments and you throw and those segments might be two seconds long or six seconds long and they have a time to live. So basically they they come to you and they they drop them off. You watch them and then they and then very quickly after that, yeah. they they get rid of them. And so so that's yeah. and and um, and so that's the that's what Apple figured out how to do rather than trying to actually stream it to you. And it made it a lot more stable. So Friday Night Baseball, there were rumors that they were uh, negotiating with the NFL for something that would be much more valuable and much more expensive, the Sunday ticket, yeah. which is currently on DirecTV. I'm sure they would like to have announced that. That may have actually been why they held up <laughs> recording this, because they would have liked to announce that, but that deal has not been uh, done. So they've got baseball. Um, I, 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 this is very much Apple. This is really... On, on message for Apple TV Plus, we don't have the best stuff, but we have some good stuff. But it's not the best well, stuff. Well, but the, but they can. I, I think that if they if they were responsible for carrying one twelfth of uh, NFL games in a season, that would have put a huge responsibility on them, and I think would have limited what they can do with they're it. They're trying the to get it. That, no, they're trying yeah, well, to they're get it. No, but 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 I think I I I, I believe that. But the, I I like the idea that this is not the entire season. They are. Uh, it's not until like uh, August or September that these games are going to be hugely important. That if they get the ability to talk to MLB and work out coverage together, that we can have uh, we can do, we can create an app for Apple TV that basically makes it so much easier to get through the tedious points of baseball that you can change camera angles you can basically decide what kind of coverage that you want i would love to see them do for uh, live sports coverage what they managed to do uh, with their power uh, on uh, on the first iphone on how the internet works on a phone they were able to tell uh, talk to AT&T and say what if they what if you don't just have limited limited mobile only like uh, 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 text based apps what if you actually gave people a real connection to the internet i think there could there could be a lot of great stuff being done there I, and i'm a fan of baseball so i'm not the person who's screaming that oh the, the game should be 45 minutes long and there should be uh, there there should be paintball guns that they have to run through yeah. from second to third yeah i think that actually baseball is one of the be baseball and cricket <laughs> are really good yeah. sports for um, interactivity because because there's not it, it, it's moving so slowly that you can do a lot of things in between you know so so the thing is is being able to have extra commentary people chatting extra data all yeah. these things you know those you know golf cricket baseball the problem with doing those kinds of things with um, basketball or soccer or even football is that everything's moving so quickly and it's always happening it's always coming at you. Yeah. 
Whereas this is one that's a little bit more of a slow pace, but you, what, what we're missing is not, yeah, we don't need to shorten the game. What we need to do is add things in between. Now, when I grew up, we were keeping that little scorecard the whole game. So I, I was, yeah, busy. yeah I'm a it baseball was a very fan. busy game, but it's a very busy game. The demographics <laughs> of baseball are terrible. It's for old people. Yeah. It's slow moving. Uh, viewership for the world series this year was half what it was five years ago. It is not a growth sport. It's the second sport you'd want. You'd really want I mean, in, in, if you're talking global, you'd want soccer or you'd want cr you know, maybe cricket. But, mm -hmm. uh, but in the U.S., you want NFL. Uh, that, the, this was as recently yeah. as a week ago uh, from uh, the Sports Business Journal, Apple and Amazon front runners for the Sunday ticket. We reported that last week. I don't, I'm sure that they were trying to get this done before the event today. And I, yeah. I really think that this was, mm -hmm. okay, we'll settle for and, Sunday and, baseball and, and, on Friday. And hopefully we're going to see some innovation. You know, the, the thing is, is that right now, even with Amazon, Amazon's done a little bit of work on the Thursday night football yeah. um, ticket where they're doing, I, don't I think like they're it, doing a 4K honestly, stream, but yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, it's, but I think that I'd love to see them push, you know, um, I'd love to see Apple with MLB on the games that they cover do things like high frame rate, HDR, you know, and then yeah. interactivity. Yeah. There's a whole second screen experience with iPads and iPhones that isn't being utilized. Right. Um, and I think that that's the kind of stuff that could be really interesting. Probably the only reason that NFL would even talk to them, I'll be honest with you. Because well, money, you know, money is a big reason. <laughs> and, like two, Apple can and, and, and it's a $2 billion package. It's an expensive I mean, package. Apple can pay anything that they ask for. And yeah. that's, the, I yeah. think what they have to do is figure out does that reduce their relevancy if they lose all broadcast? So, you know, you know, so from that's, from the it. least important event <laughs> announcement on this event <laughs> uh, to the second least important, the iPhone will now come in Alpine Green. <laughs> uh, no, no, no! But you, you, no, only Alpine Green if you if you cut out for the Pro model. The, the, the green, yeah, they have a green for the peons for the poppers. Oh yes, the Alpine for the Green is reserved for the folk. exclusive ones, the yes, fancy exactly. folk. Uh, Old money versus new money. But then, as soon as they did that. Uh, the whole tone changed because uh, Tim Cook said, now let's talk about Apple Silicon. And as you said, this is really where Apple shines. They, they're, yeah. they're, I mean, they are pulling away. I mean, it is, yeah. it is, you know, it's, they are at, um, I mean, we saw this one when M1 came out and it was that popular at this pace, it's going to take them like two or three more updates before anyone's even close. It's you mind know, like boggling it's, what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, they did start slow with the iPhone SE. <laughs> which really looks like the vintage, the retro iPhone with its rounded corners and a touch ID yeah. button and all of that. But it does have the latest processor, the A15 yeah. Bionic in it. Uh, it supports I that, I, 5G. I thought that that was very, very significant. I think that they're very, very clearly saying, g given that there's way more performance inside every iPhone than anybody is ever going to use, particularly when you get to the iPhone SE, they could easily get by with uh, with the A14, the, A3, the A13, something older. I think the fact that they're putting the same chip in every single phone that they make makes it really clear that whatever they intend to do in the near future with software, with operating systems, with, with services, they don't want to have a line of demarcation between iPhone users who can use this and iPhone users who can't use this. They want every iPhone to be able to run the exact same software and it's probably going to be That's the, smart. And the, the, and they and they need the and they need the neural engine to do it. Yeah. So this this makes this makes the whole platform a lot more interesting than I usually react to for a, a, a refreshing of the iPhone SE. This is, you know, if you don't care about having all the fancy cameras, uh you want to save the price is $429 as yeah. starting price comes in product red, uh white and black, which they call Starlight and Midnight, respectively. Um, but look, I mean, it really feels like an old-fashioned iPhone. And I think that this is really appeals to a lot of uh, normal people. This is the iPhone it's, that it's most fine. people yeah. will want, yeah. I have to say, um, uh, you know, after Apple's announcement two years ago of 5G, 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 <laughs> I was very skeptical at that point. And it, it's true that millimeter wave 5G has been very, as fast as it is, has been very limited in, in its reach. Uh, now that uh, mid-band mid uh, 5G is coming out very rapidly, low-band, which T-Mobile's had and others for some time, isn't much faster than LTE. Mid-band is uh, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile all are doing it. And I, uh, I have a Verizon phone and a T-Mobile phone here in little Podunk, Petaluma, getting the mid-band. They call it UW on Verizon and UC on T-Mobile. And it's 500 megabits down and 30 megabits up. It's really... Fast, fast enough that I would even consider the residential service from Verizon as a good alternative for ISP. But what are we using it for? <laughs> well, <laughs> like I'm sorry. residential ISP for one. Oh, residential, uh, yeah. Yeah. If, is the price right? 
Yeah, it's very comparable to cable. It's a little less than, maybe okay. 10 bucks less than cable. Um, so, but also, uh, if you can get 500 down and 30 up, <laughs> uh, you want a phone that can do it. Um, you know, I mean, immediately yeah. there's yeah, other sure. issues because you're going to hit your data cap pretty quick that way. Right. Um, but the point is, it's now much more widespread. Uh, every uh, every company's rolling it out very quickly. And so 5G maybe is more important than it was back when it was all, all over the place, 5G. Yeah. Uh, 64 gigs is the base model. 20, 256 gigs is the top. That's good, too, by the way. I'm tired of people... Uh, you know, calling me saying, I only have a six, eight gigs on my iPhone. How can I upgrade it? Uh, you got to do that if you want to keep it up to date. And that's the most important thing that this will be getting all the updates for all the other iPhones will be getting. Yeah. Some people want a 4.7 inch screen. I think that there's a market for that. Did, did, mm -hmm. did they still yeah, do the nice. mini? I don't even remember. It's nice. Yeah, you know, that we use a lot of these phones oftentimes as like little extras or yeah. one's company phones or whatever. And it's good to have one that's not not so expensive yeah. to, to have to, to fill those gaps. And yeah. for kids, yeah. you know, like these, this is the kind of one I wouldn't spend a thousand dollars for my kid. No. Five hundred dollars, maybe. It gets people in the market, yeah. right? Uh, well, also, 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 they don't want to have that line. Of, they don't want to have that separation between people are going to be buying Android phones for their kids. They want to they want to make sure that they, right. they all stay in the important. family on one. Thing. Yeah. yeah, that's super important. So there's definitely a market for these. I'm sure they sell well. Um, so welcome to the iPhone. It's weird because it doesn't have a number. So it's hard to, you know, it's just the SE. Yeah. But it's the new SE with the A15 uh, Bionic um, in it. And, oh, uh, and the by iPhone the way, 13 mini is still a thing. It is a thing. Okay. Yes. You don't, they don't talk about it a lot. <laughs> I don't, I, and the thing, and the thing is what, uh, what would you get out of it? You can get higher capacity. It does come in green. <laughs> uh, you Not do red, get the face black. ID. Yeah. 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 A, no, but the, the A15 is now a great leveler in this entire thing. Okay. You also get the dual camera system. So, okay. You're getting stuff with it. Yeah. You're getting a little bit more. Um, by the way, everything we're going to talk about, and this is the other thing, hallelujah, will be or available for a pre-order today. Uh, like before the show even ended, I was ordering uh, the new <laughs> Studio Mac and uh, uh, delivering, if you get it in time, uh, as early as March 18th, a week from Friday. So there, uh, there were no, this was not a peak at something coming. Exactly. Uh, they did at the very end. Say, yeah. okay, we've done all of it except for one Mac. <laughs> There's still one Mac. And We're going to do a Mac Pro. Mac Pro is still to come. Still and I, I like think that the they like, it looked a little smug. Like, like here's what we did before we did the Mac Pro. Right. Like, watch what happens now. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I like, mean, I've, my I've, mind's I've, already blown with what they announced today. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what a Mac Pro is going to look like, but we're going to get to you that. Know, we, we're going to get to that. Um, I do. Let's take a break now. I'm trying to trying to divide this into three chunks. So we'll do the iPad next. Uh, and that'll be a fairly short thing compared to the big chunk, which is going to be new Macs, new monitor. Um, very. My orders in. My yeah, orders me too. <laughs> Several. We can talk about our credit specs. card already Just burning up. It's heating yep. up. Just how many did you buy? I just bought one. I bought two. I, I already have eight Mac Minis. No, I know. Actually, I bought three. I bought one yeah. for me, high end, mm -hmm. one for Lisa, medium end, yeah, and one for Micah because he needed a new, he was due for a new computer. And plus, he doesn't have an M1 and he's the host of iOS today. And so he needs to, he needs to look at iOS apps on the Mac, which by the way, Apple was spent some time saying by the way ios apps on the mac you know don't forget don't forget yeah, yeah. that's very important all right we'll have uh, <laughs> i was by the way during this i they're teasing it out and i'm going yeah. crazy and i'm going to do the same thing to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're not going to tell you what we actually got teasing I, it out yeah. when we get there we'll i'll get tell to you. it We'll get yeah. to it. But first, I want to talk about Imperfect Foods, which as far as I'm concerned is absolutely perfect. Thursday's Imperfect Food Day at the Laporte household. Imperfect Foods is a grocery delivery service that makes you feel good. You know, combating climate change eh, feels like it's big, it's overwhelming. What can it, you do, one person all by yourself? Well, 
You can make an impact with Imperfect Foods. It's a grocery delivery service offering an entire line of sustainable groceries that taste delicious and reduce waste just by embracing the natural imperfections in food. Now, before I go too much farther, because I know you're going to want this, I want to tell you, you should go to imperfectfoods.com. Make sure that it's available in your area. It is not available in all areas. Uh, but if it is, you are in luck. So the idea initially was there's a lot of produce that grocers won't stock because they only want the giantest apples, the pomegranates as big as your head, you know, the and and they and there's which means that as much as a third of the U.S. food uh, uh, creation is is just, is just not never sold. It's thrown away, fed to animals, but it's never sold because grocers say, no, 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 I can't sell that apple. It looks like it just was on a tree. <laughs> well, I grew up with apples off the tree. They're sweeter, they're better, and that's what you get with Imperfect Foods. Delicious produce the grocer didn't want to carry, but is better than anything you've, you've had in a long time. It's fresh, it's seasonal, but now they even sell all your favorite pantry staples, yummy snacks. The meats that they sell uh, have the same kind of philosophy, sustainable. Man, the heritage chickens we get at Imperfect Foods are fantastic. Now, once you sign up, you, every week you can personalize your order, choose what you want from that big range. They have dairy as well. Your order will arrive on the same day every week. Like I said, ours is Thursday, but they do that on purpose because they want to consolidate all the deliveries in your area into one day which reduces emissions. In fact, delivering weekly by neighborhood produces 25 to 75% fewer emissions than all those people going to the grocery store. On average, imperfect food customers save six to eight pounds of food with every order, food that would go, would just not be in the system. So you're really doing a good thing for the planet and a good thing to yourself. They're the only national grocery delivery company that makes it easy to return your packaging after every order. They minimize plastics. I always just break down the box, put all the packaging together. Sometimes there's a cool, you know, a cool wrap and an and a ice bag. I put that all together, leave it on the porch. When they come on Thursday, they pick it up, recycle it. So you don't have that guilt that you've got a lot of packaging. You just have great food. Right now, 20% off your first four orders. Yes. When you go to imperfectfoods.com and use the promo code MACBREAK, M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K, 20% off your first four orders. That's up to an $80 value at imperfectfoods.com. I-M-P-E-R-F-E-C-T foods.com. Just don't forget to use the promo code MACBREAK. That way they know you saw it here. We're very, we love our Imperfect Foods delivery every Thursday. You will too. Imperfectfoods.com. Promo code is MACBREAK. And no, we pay for, <laughs> I suppose I should say this, they don't give us free groceries. We, <laughs> we subscribe just like you do. Uh, got the 20% got the off for the first four orders, just like you will. Uh, we pay the full freight. I'm very happy with it. Imperfectfoods.com. All right. I think, you know, so far so good. 429 iPhone SE, Friday Night Baseball. Then they get to the iPad Air. We, these are things we expected. It's got 5G in it. It's got an M1 processor in it. Now, that's interesting. Not an A15, but an M1. Yeah. Now, it's the same, and Renee would tell you it's the same. But what I thought was intriguing, and I'm curious what you think, is this is really starting to verge on the iPad Pro. Same design. Yeah. Uh, same processor, 8-core M1. It's got USB-C. Uh, they have a smart keyboard for it. Starts at $599, so it's a great price. How do we make the distinction? Or maybe we're going to see a, a pro leap forward? What is, what's going to happen here? Yeah. I don't know why it's, you'd it's buy a, the pro now. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I've been looking at the specs just to make sure that I'm, I'm clear on things. Uh, you, the, the biggest difference is that you don't get Thunderbolt uh, on, the, on the Air. That Thunderbolt is now only on the iPad, uh, iPad Pro. And it's a very, very tight comparison between the 10.9-inch the, the, uh, uh, Pro and the uh, and the 11 inch Air because uh, even if uh, external displays are still not a problem because you can still connect uh, DisplayPort through USB C uh, on the iPad Air you lose uh, higher capacity uh, storage you lose uh, one camera I think but in terms of someone who wants a cheap and excuse me a, a mid range iPad laptop that doesn't necessarily want a 12.9 inch display. It's it really is the difference between how do you define yourself as a pro and if you can t 
dis dissuade yourself of needing Thunderbolt uh, or, uh, or or 512 gigs of storage. It seems as though you want to save that money and get the smart, uh, uh, get the Magic Keyboard instead. It's a similar display, but not exactly the same as on the right. uh, Pro. It's P3 True Tone, a but little it's, bit but less it's still, bright. Right. But, but it's not like LED, micro LED. Excuse me. It's, it's yeah. A, uh, but it's not mini it's, it's LED. Not, yeah. It's, it's not. It's not as though the the Pro is a mini LED. So you're not getting. The, the the other reason for going for the twelve point nine when I bought mine was that I want that better display. Right. Uh, so there's still there's still you're not necessarily kicking yourself that hard for getting a pro uh, a twelve point nine if you wanted the M one chip. But, it does have the front facing you know. twelve megapixel camera. Now everything has that uh, that centering you know uh, center uh, stage yeah. center stage where it moves around with you. Uh, even the new monitor has that, which is I thought was kind of interesting. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean it's. You're going to have to really look if you want to get an iPad Pro at why you're spending the extra money, I think. Yeah, yeah I mean, th th there's a huge cost difference between 500 nits and I think it's 1,600 nits on the other on the other display. So yeah. they are definitely saving some money there um, as far as that goes. Um, but I think that uh, I think that it's a very usable Mac. I mean, if, if I was a school, again, again, March tends to be a kind of a nod towards last purchases that schools might do it's not a not a bad not a bad ipad to use yeah. if, if you're thinking about ipads if you're thinking yeah. in that direction actually honestly uh this could even be a college i, I put oh, yeah. laptop in quotes but this is a very capable very system. solid yeah and then everyone's fast yeah, they they were they were explicit in saying faster than the fastest competitive Windows tablet, up to two times faster than the fastest Windows laptop in its price range. Uh, so yeah, they, that's where they're going for. It also is a flex on Apple Silicon now. M1 everywhere, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. It's and so this is what's really going to be interesting is uh, uh, just consistent improvement in processors. Well, consistent and very <laughs> leaps and bounds. Leaps you know, and that's bounds. The, yeah, with everything, they're just they're they're starting to really flex. You know, and and again, we saw this when the M1 came out. Like when 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 they announced that they were going to go, they were going to have a new chip. A lot of us were like, we should buy a bunch of Intel machines right before they screw this up for the next year or two. And the first M1 came out, and nobody I know, <laughs> like everyone's like, no more Intel. Like we're not going to buy any more of this because <laughs> yep. because it just you could just see what was going to happen. It, it was like it, when the M1 came out, I was like, if that's if that's version one, this is going to get really interesting. And then as we keep on seeing the the level of performance change between updates, and you know it's only been a year and a half, right, before, since the first time we saw an M1, uh, it's it's going to be a really hard pace to keep up with because again because it's all integrated because they're not working with outside you know folks you know they don't have to figure out how to get this chip to talk to that chip they don't have to deal with buses they can design whatever they want really changes the the, the playing field a lot it's just uh, damn exciting <laughs> that's what I that's yeah. all I can say so yeah. um, I'm gonna see if I can find the slides. I wish. I wonder if somebody has the slides. Do you know? I have. I have them. You have them, but that doesn't help me. Where did you get them? <laughs> uh, I just. I just screen grabbed them. What yeah, you, you were for? smart. You were smart. Um, so I'm going to try to find uh, the slides because that's you know unfortunately they move so fast that uh, you know you, you we we seem to miss some of the uh, the details and they actually skim over some of the details. Johnny, uh, John Turnus comes out and says, well, you know, we have the M1. We have the M1 Pro. We have the M1 Max. What's next? And the slide I want is, uh, if I can find it, is where he shows the uh, dies of these uh, processors. Let me see if I can Google it. M1 Pro Max Ultra. Because essentially what, you know, and then he says, and now introducing the M1 Ultra. And uh, the, basically the way they solved this problem is kind of how we thought, but maybe even a little bit better than we thought by dual core. But with their dual, new deep di dual dies, yeah. dual dies, yeah, not dual core, but it is it's multi core still. But uh, you, actually, you're gonna have twenty core and more. But yeah, dual dies. But they uh, uh, turn us set it up by saying the problem in the past with multi core uh, multi die architectures has been the communications. And so they've introduced something called the Ultra Fusion Architecture, which has interprocessor bandwidth of 2.5 terabytes per second. Um, okay, 
Right on, I right just, on, right on. Yeah. Check, check. If, if you take the if you take the the chart, and I haven't been able to find it, but if you take the chart, you've got your M1, and then it gets a little fatter with the M1 Pro, and then it gets a little fatter with the M1 Ultra, then it's suddenly or M1 Max, then you go to the Ultra, it's not getting fatter, it's getting taller. It's like a skyscraper. Yeah. They've they basically taken two M1 Maxes and stacked them one on top of the other. Very impressive. Yeah, but they're but they're making a real. I, I love the little the little smirk as they said. Well, it's the, the M1 has always had a feature that we've been keeping secret until now. Yes, and it really and it's this architect. It's this yeah. technology that allows them to basically bridge two dies without having the. They're 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 making they're making the point that uh, it isn't as simple as saying, oh, we'll just put, we'll just have uh, uh, two di two basically two dies on this on the on the same module. Uh, but no, no, no. When you when you try to connect them together, the system sees them as two CPU uh, two different CPU units. And they're saying that uh, developers have to be able to program for that. And basically it fakes it, it to, to all software, including the OS. It thinks that it's one big CPU. And, and they're also talking about how quickly it, it, it communicates with each other. So that's that was a very, very technical and very, very impressive hunk. I think for the, for the developers who listened to Apple during WWDC and started programming to Metal a while ago, uh, Apple kept on saying, you really... Like when, they, yeah. when they released Metal, they were like, "You really want to write to the stop writing directly to the to the hardware? You know, you really want to use Metal, and now you can see why because it just for them this is this is seamless for the the developers that have written a lot of hard code to the to the Metal, uh, not to Metal, but to the uh, to the hardware. They're having a lot of trouble getting you know basically unwriting everything to get it to to work. So he did kind of mention that this doesn't require any. Uh, specialized programming chops. If you wrote to metal. If you wrote to metal. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Uh, but yeah. that's really where Apple, and they even said that. They said, look, uh, the tight integration between Mac OS and our hardware uh, makes a big difference. And I think that's true. The Mac OS, is, the hardware is written for Mac OS or designed for Mac OS. It's a Swift machine. Here's yeah. John Syracuse's uh, post. He tweeted this, the dies. He calls them the JC dies, building blocks for the Pro Mac SOCs. And that actually is a, is a good, uh, as you can see, a good, there's the M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and then yeah. two of them side by side to make the Jade 2C die, which is basically, uh, hmm. some somebody suggested you call it the M1 Max Quadra or M1 Max Duo, but it's really <laughs> the M1 Mac, M1 Ultra, which I like. Also, also there's some bad mojo with the <laughs> with, with that terminology that they don't want to Duo do. Duo and uh, Quadra, yeah, you probably don't want to go with that. Yeah. But by the way, I, I just posted all the, the, the four feature quilts uh, on my Twitter. Thank you. Ground. The feature quilts. Is that what you call those? That's what, I, that's what I've always called them. I love it. <laughs> They're feature quilts. Uh, good. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Uh, and for everybody who follows Andy on Twitter, that's it. Someone should make a quilt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that could be Etsy, what a good Etsy idea. challenge extended. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, what a good idea. Oh, look at this. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> that's fantastic. So um, let's see. So they announced, okay, we now have the Ultra. So now we're going, oh, interesting. What do you do with that? Uh, and instead you give it all the RAM. You give it all the RAM. <laughs> instead of announcing a mini, they announced something called the Mac Studio. It's interesting. The rumor mill started talking about a Mac Studio. John, uh, Mark right. Berman uh, started tweeting it yesterday. And I think what happens, I've expected this, as you get closer to the event, hundreds of people are involved in this production, right? Many outside uh, mm -hmm. uh, contractors. Somebody's going to say something. Yeah. Yeah, it's. it's it, I think they should. They, they could have called it the extruded mint. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a little bit yeah. of a fatso, like a doesn't mini, it? And then we just hit extrude. And <laughs> it's a little right. fatso, <laughs> but the. Uh, so what I took away from this is, no iMac Pro. You don't need an iMac Pro. What a, wouldn't it be better? And I've thought this for a while. If you had a standalone monitor, and a standalone Mac Mini-ish Mac that yeah. you could then stack, and in fact, the new stand for the monitor has a little table for you to put yeah. your fatso on well and, and the thing is this is my time the timing for this is perfect for me because i was just like my my imac that i'm that i'm talking into right now is 2017 i've been waiting for like yes uh, you know every time i go <laughs> is it time to get a new imac and i and about two months ago i was like i'm not getting a new imac i was waiting no. for this mac mini me too what i thought was gonna be mac mini because i was like because i want to be able to route different things exactly. into, this, into this monitor i want to be able to do whatever i want to I do want i don't my want it to be own able. display yeah and I want to put my computer somewhere else. Yeah. 
Uh, no, I, I had exactly that that thought, and that's the other thing. If you don't like the fat, so you don't have to put it under the monitor. You could right. You could put it uh, somewhere else. So yeah. let's uh, let's start talking about the Mac Studio. I think this is there's not. So just before we do though, I think it's fair to say there will not be a high end Mac Mini. That's what this is yeah. by another name. That makes there sense. will not be an iMac Pro. You spent five thousand uh, dollars, Alex, as did I. At least right. for that iMac yep. Pro, that 2017 iMac Pro, and in every respect, you combine this, even the low-end Mac Studio with the new Studio Monitor, you're going to spend 500 bucks less, you know, at least, and get something that's more more than twice as fast. So there's no question this is a uh, more than ample replacement for the Mini. I mean the iMac. Yeah. Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, also, you have to wonder why. Uh, someone who wants this kind of performance would want an all-in-one to begin with. That that, that well, that's the, why the, the iMac Pro was a little bit of a weird outlier. Yeah, I, I always I always thought that I, I I never got confirmation on this even like uh, off the record, but I always thought that this was a des that the iMac Pro was always a desperation move. That this that the the uh, that the 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 the, the, the Quaker Oats box uh, cylinder tower of uh, Mac Pro was laid such an egg, was such a dud. They had to get something out there that was going to give customers creators the performance that they needed and not encourage them to 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 jump ship and go off to to windows because the the idea of the idea of like uh, apple designing something that has two immense fans immense blowers just putting this huge hump on the back of an iMac that's not the sort of thing that they would be that they would they would have wanted to do if their previous uh, mac pro had been a success uh, so i don't I, it's whereas when you take a look at an all in one m1 mac that's super uh, iMac that's super super powerful but it's slim, comes in lots of cool colors. It's a thing that you buy for all the little desktops on your, in your office for the people who don't necessarily need high performance. It's cool. It's fun. You like it. That's exactly what an iMac should be. And what's, I think that's what it's always supposed to be. They did an interesting thing, you know, um, with these new uh, chips. A lot of performance cores and a, only a couple of efficiency cores. It became very clear when they started talking about this that what they're going to do here is make a plug-in computer. And and so you have, uh, I wrote it down, uh, 16 performance cores in the 20-core CPU and four efficiency cores. There's not a lot of efficiency cores. This is not the half and half you see on an iPhone yeah. because this is a plug-in device. And as right. a result, the other thing they immediately focused on, and I had kind of shades of Johnny Ive here, is the holes... <laughs> the first thing I saw, I thought, oh, my God, is this a cheese grater? Because they show the holes on the bottom, and suddenly we see, when we see the model, that there is a lot of cooling. In fact, half of the fat boy, the yep. top half, is fans. Yep. Yeah. And they, they, they felt the need to make sure they say that we think that even at the highest level of performance, you'll barely be able to hear it. And so you can hear that they're a little bit something they, they they can they they get a pass for delivering performance and not not caring that this thing is absolutely deadly panther in the jungle quiet. Uh, but you can see you can tell they're a little oh we wish this were quiet this we wish this were, this were quieter. But yeah they, they they made a big I think that also they're hurting from previous problems that they were having selling high performance machines with the, that had faulty cooling and they they wanted to make it really 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 certain that look how big our fans are look how much we've thought about. The, the flow of air through this thing, uh, about how it not only it, it's shaped and it's, it's shaped and it's dis, and it's uh, distinctive. Uh, I wonder how that will affect. I wonder if it still works that way if you have it on its side, because I think that a lot of people are not going to pay attention to like the clear design cues that says that this is supposed to be on its base. A lot of people are going to try to turn it on its side. I want to put it under, gonna... my, under my desk. I don't want to even put it underneath yeah. the monitor. So here's yeah, the it's... thank you to Evil IRC in our chat room who found this. This is actually from. Uh, the Apple Store or the Apple page describing it. This is the these are the stacked yeah. uh, processes. That really tells you that's that's a f you said you use the word and I think it's appropriate, Alex. A flex. That is a, a absolutely. That's like it's just, hey, you want two of them? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 the way that they're putting them together again, this is this was impossible with Intel. So what they're doing now is able they're able to they're kind of unleashed and and the thing that has got to be scary scary to a lot everybody else is that you have a company with the money to do anything when they're unleashed and now they're unleashed, they're totally you know? And so, yeah. so this is, you know, this is, this is the elephant in the room. This is the angry elephant that's three times bigger than you expected and runs like a cheetah. 
You know, like, you know, and, and, and that's a... <laughs> That's a scary place to be if you're in the Has, industry. I mean, I imagine Intel's been working on their interconnects, right? They yeah, uh, but it's the problem is is that how do you do this when you, the problem is is that you need control of the whole board. Yeah. Like this is this yeah. is what Apple can do, and that's why it's so hard for the rest of the industry. You can get the chips to be a little bit faster and so on and so forth, but can you control the entire I/O um, to, to take advantage of it? So yeah. uh, the very first product they talked about uh, running on these new ultra chips is uh, the alt the um, M1 I'm sorry the studio <laughs> the Mac studio with the M1 Max M1 Max and yeah you get the, the, the 2000 the cheap one is uh, is the M1 Max the expensive one has the M1 Ultra and okay. it's a difference price difference of what double $2000 uh, starting price in the M1 Max uh, and I think 4000 on the M1 Ultra I actually which maybe, was talking Lisa down a couple of days ago I said yeah. they're probably going to announce a mini it may not have a Max in it it may just be a pro in it. I was exactly wrong. <laughs> yeah. uh, this the, this I mean, is this. So yeah. the one with the Max is actually, in a way, the Mini that you thought you were right. going to get, right? Uh, right. The higher yeah. end of that. For a little it's bit a, more than but, I expected. <laughs> yeah, but two thousand right. is what I paid for my base model MacBook Pro fourteen inch with the right. M one right. Pro. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're getting more in some ways, right? You're getting a yep. lot of power, a lot of horsepower, sixty four yeah, gigs of unified memory. Um, that, by the way, well, we're going to get to the graphics card conversation, but put a pin in that unified memory yeah. number, 128 gigs yeah. of unified memory on the M1 Ultra, uh, 400 gigabit gigabytes per second memory bandwidth on the max, 800 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth on the ultra. And the SSDs are extremely, uh, fast on these. So, uh, this is a, this is a beast. This is yeah. a beast. Yeah. They also they so they they led this off with I think the right uh, a line that uh, I had to go back and make sure I I, I noted correctly. So they they basically led this off by saying the theme of this machine was performance, connectivity, modularity. So they covered the performance with the CPUs, but they really delivered on connectivity. Uh, given the given that the complaints of course about the Mac Mini were that it is essentially the MacBook Air chip inside a Mac Mini, you can get two displays. That's about it. Uh, the idea that uh, you can have like what five uh, simultaneously supporting five displays one thing that was i was a little bit confused by was there's sometimes in the specs when they were talking i got confused about is there future are there is, is there connectivity and features that are exclusive to the m1 ultra because it has two separate dies and therefore twice the twice the pipes uh but the sort no, of is the back has t4 for uh thunderbolt four right. ports the front has USB-C ports on the max and on the ultra it has they're all thunderbolt 4 so there's a few little differences like that yeah the, I'm, I'm looking at, i'm looking at the tech specs where they have the, the the two side by side and under video support they don't break that into two different columns so that says simultaneously supports up to five displays support for up to four pro display xdrs uh, over USB C and one display 4k over hdmi that was so quite a that, flex too where she said and you can have a big tv yeah. And of course, that's for video editors who do want that display, uh, but also the, the their monitors. Um, I was a little disappointed. So was Anthony Nielsen to hear only sixty hertz, um, not a higher refresh rate. Does that bother you, Alex? Does that matter? It, it's, it's only for odd. gamers care. Well, gamers care for now. Yeah. And and um, and I think that it is. Uh, you know, a lot of us are paying a lot of attention to high frame rate. And so um, I think that for the most part, it's probably fine. I mean, most people aren't going to use it that way. But um, you, you're seeing most things going to 120 yeah. um, hertz. And, and so the PC it, it side, little, it's 120 yeah. and a lot, even in yeah. laptops. Um, this, I love, th so Apple, as usual, showed their weird graphs with no, no, no zero origin and no, you know, no. But on the website, they do have uh, some benchmarks, which actually are great. So this is the CPU performance, and they're comparing a uh, Ultra Max, the uh, Mac Pro with the 16-core Xeon, and the 27-inch iMac 10-core i9. I think that's the Pro. Uh, and then you can click different things. So this is NASA's Tetris. is 5.3 times faster. Uh, Houdini. But you see these graphs. Uh, it looks, by the way, on Houdini... Not much difference to the Mac Pro with Xeon and the Mac M1 Max Mac Studio, um, but a big difference 
and it just depends on how they're using the data. I mean, Houdini is a really comp yeah, very yeah. complex. Yeah, app what are they to, doing with Houdini? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Photoshop, uh, some big performance improvements there. Vectorworks. I think a lot of Mac folks might want to know how Affinity Photo performs. Uh, it uh, because it's written for uh, it, probably in Swift for um, the Mac is very much uh, tuned to it. There isn't a huge difference in the Ultra and the Max uh, yeah. there. But you notice that most of the time, at least during the uh, during the presentation, when they were comparing how much faster the new was to the old, they were comparing Max-based, uh, the studios that were based on Max to the fastest iMac Pro. They're comparing the Ultra to the fastest Mac Pro. Isn't that so interesting? They're yes. So they're clearly making a difference between... Yes. People who are going to spend an extra two thousand dollars, yeah. So there, I mean, uh, look, I own, <laughs> I own a significant portion of the Intel <laughs> lineup. <laughs> uh, is there any reason to keep any of that, Alex? Well, the, it depends on what you're using. I mean, I think that for, I mean, you, you can always, I use computers until they die. Mm -hmm. So there's always things to do with them. You know, I have this, uh, you know, this Telestrator is running on like a 2012 Mac Mini. Yeah, because you know, it's fine. So yeah. It's fine. It does what it needs to do. Yeah. But, but that's all it needs to do. You know, and so um, so I think that there's, I have plenty of Mac Minis and laptops that I keep on using for other things, um, sometimes just to run old operating systems so that I can still get to things. Um, so, so I think that those things are useful. I think that um, I'm glad that I switched to the M1, um, you know, uh, when it came out so that we bought a lot of those. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I said half fans. It looks like it's a little more like... Uh, Two thirds fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's 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 pretty exciting. I mean, it's it it's is a, by the way exactly the same footprint size as the Mac Mini. So it really is an extruded just, Mac Mini. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. and it's not quite twice that. as tall. Uh, it's not. We actually put two Mac Minis together to to simulate it. It's not quite that 3. tall. Three point three point seven inches tall. Yeah, seven point yeah. seven inches square. It's. Uh, you know, as with any new footprint, it's going to look a little weird at first, and you'll get used to it. Uh, some yeah. people have compared it to the cube in some ways. Uh, Maybe we, we said that we said that during office hours or after hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is a, I, I I wonder if that's another sign of the difference between that we're in definitely a, a new post Johnny Ive age of Apple, where they didn't even consider let's just re, let's just refab the the case and make it a little bit more interesting. Put the put a grill in the front, put some perforations, do whatever. They just simply, as Alex said, op, open up the open up the CAD app, <laughs> extrude another two inches, boom, ship it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which okay, is which is which is great. It's like ship it. It's efficient. All the they, they, they looks like all they did was say, here's how much room we're going to need for the fans. Add more room for the fans. Put some holes in the front. Well, that's that's and that's another thing. For, uh, for understanding that people people who are going to be using SD cards might want to actually insert them into the machine. Let's not have them around the back of a 27 and 27 inch awesome? iMac display. It's like no, this is we're we're intending for people to actually use these. I things. always forget there's an SD card slot on my iMac Pro. <laughs> always, uh, but yeah, it's right yeah, there on the front where it belongs, along with two. Uh, USB C type ports, either Thunderbolt four or USB C, depending on the model you get. Yeah. And some of the and some of the other things that you know, like the OWC makes those little base that has an extra oh, and it'll drive fit on and that. has yeah, it'll just sit uh, theoretically. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it messes up the the airflow, but it, it shouldn't because it's designed to work with a Mac Mini too. You know so. what this does, by the way? All those stupid renders you might have seen with plexiglass tops and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, uh -uh. Mm. no, uh -uh. Yep. that's not what we did. Uh, you yeah. were wrong. You guys were wrong. Those are all made up. Um, I remember when they're shipping this, like when you think about how good Apple is at keeping a secret, this was done, you know, this was probably done a year ago, maybe two years ago, you yeah. know, like it, it yeah. you know, because, because it, you know, to have it shipping means that millions have already been made, you know, so it's not, you know, it's, it's, um, and that had to be fabbed that had to be, you know, like everything. So it's, it's a, you know, at least six months, probably a year and a half ago is when they thought of this or here's, when they finished it. Here's the uh, cooling video that they have on the, uh, on the website. So it draws in from below, mm -hmm. uh, and then the fans have a kind of a little L turn on them, and so it's uh, it's pulling it up from below and then pushing it out the back, yeah. where there is a big grid uh, on the back. And, and by the way, that size... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, but with, with fans this powerful, I'm wondering how hard it's going to be to open that up and clean those fans, because there's that's going to be a dust a magnet. Lot of, a lot of stuff and that's, going and, in and there. That, and that's, that's periodic maintenance that you have to do, yeah. if you're, unless you're living in a clean room. Yeah. Scooter yeah, X says, those are blowers, not fans. Okay, blowers. Yeah, oh, <laughs> well, and, and by the way, the size of those greatly affects the, the, the amount of um, 
sound they make. Yeah, the so noise. Yeah, you want by making fans. them a lot bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a lot, lot yeah. quieter. They they can operate at a slower RPM. Uh, I I wonder if Johnny Ive, uh, what he would say about the grid, the grill. It's not. Uh, it, it ain't a cheese grater. Uh, it does look like though. There's some interesting stuff done below with the curves and the geometry of that. It's 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 okay to you know it's okay to have a boring aluminum yes. round corner box. Again, we, we're not again we, the, we we we've seen the we've seen the 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 Quaker Oats box machine that looked beautiful it was as a static object that <laughs> right. you don't have to actually run any software on. It was a lovely thing to regard academically, but the thing is that 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 impresses you for three days, and then you're wondering why the thing can't cool. It's is keep is uh, is thermally fro throttling because you don't have you need it to have active cooling, and you lost the argument about how if we have an actual fan oh no no the fan would actually c uh, cause noise and we can't have noise here we I, I love the idea of apple returning to we can do stylish but we will all, we're not going to make sh we're not going to make that uh, get in the way of having a successful product that people are going to get five or six years of happy use out of uh, are you sad alex no mag safe it's got the mickey mouse uh, plug-in <laughs> i don't care about it not not for the mac mini i mean i don't want a mag safe actually for a mac mini because i don't want to be pulling cables around and having right. it pop out right. it's for the laptop when i have a battery to that's back different. it up i yeah, I, I want a mag safe but yeah. for this i would yeah. want to plug in yeah. I, i'm a little bummed that the, i mean the, the mickey mouse uh <laughs> we call it the mickey mouse connector yeah um yeah. is it's it, i'm like oh another connector i have to manage because it's really nice when it's a figure eight or a c13 so this is a non-standard uh it's not non non-standard but it may well it depends it depends on the scale of it yeah. it's just not as it's, you don't have as many of them laying yeah. around so well, but it gives it a ground. Yeah, that's the that's is that the is that why? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You get if you if with the one that the Mac Mini currently has and the Apple TV, which are both the same, are, are a standard. I think they're C sevens, and um, those C sevens are are uh, they don't carry a ground with them, so you can feel it sometimes. <laughs> you know, if you're connected to it, um, but uh, if you're ground, if you become the ground, um, but the um, but this one, yeah, adding the ground so is going to be more. Better. Still, though, a power brick, right? The power supply is not inside this, or is it? It is. It is. Yeah, that's a. Yeah, that's that connector for internal power supply. Yeah, that's interesting. Yep. What? That seems like a mistake. You're bringing a lot of heat back into the case. Yeah, but it's a lot better. I mean, power power supply sitting outside, or you know, that that's much harder to replace. Yeah. You know, when you need when when something goes wrong and it's it's actually not harder to replace if you burn it up, but it's but it's harder to replace. You know, this one that I think that 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 plug is going to be the standard plug that we can that we yes. can go buy at the hardware store yeah yeah, yeah. uh and on the back a very nice as one hoped selection of ports <clears throat> including four thunderbolt four ports uh 10 gigabit ethernet is that enough for you alex <clears throat> i i think it's a, there's never it's never enough <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it's enough for it's, me i will fill that up pretty <laughs> within the first two days you know the, yeah. the 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 advantage though is that with because those are all thunderbolts on the back you know of course i can thunderbolt into something else that'll expand one even further yeah so i, can I didn't connectors so i for instance didn't buy uh, i bought a terabyte hard drive not a four terabyte or even eight yep, have, me too uh because i'll be putting external stuff on there anyway um yep. Two USB A ports, which is nice to have. I presume it's really nice to have some. You ones. know, like it's yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have a couple. There's of still USB some legacy. You know, you got a thumb drive and stuff. Yeah, HDMI, Keyboard which jam. is nice. Uh, yeah, they mentioned yeah. that those uh, four Type C ports can drive Display Port, uh, but the HDMI is nice. So um, that's pretty flexible, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's it's great to have an HDMI cable. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. it just it it would be one of the USB C. It would be one of the Thunderbolt or USB Cs for you if it wasn't there. And so, right. and it's dedicated. You know that it's there. You don't need an adapter because you, yeah. you're going to need to plug it into something. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, you don't need an adapter. I mean, you've got six Type C ports on this right. thing, so there's yeah. there's plenty of places. And even then, you may have. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm probably going to have a dock. Uh, for extra. God, uh, this is this is this is definitely like Scrooge on Christmas morning versus Scrooge on Christmas Eve. It's like yeah, <laughs> they, they, yeah. they they've seen the light. And say everybody gets ports. Oh no, you don't have to use up one of the Thunderbolt ports for for HDMI. Why don't we give you an extra one? It's yeah. and especially on a on a four thousand dollar machine where they could say, well, look, I mean, not that we're gonna, not that we don't think that money is money, but hey, buy a Cal Digit box for three hundred bucks and we'll give you one extra ports for that kind of stuff. 
we're just going to give you Thunderbolt and you can do whatever you want with each one of them. Right. The, I was so pleased. That, that, that's so not what I would have expected from Apple four years ago, five years ago. Yeah, I'm back ordered on the Cal Digit, but that's exactly what you'd want that Thunderbolt for, uh, Cal yeah. Digit. Uh, to the SD uh, XC is the faster SD card, right? That's but you, yep. you. You you missed the the headphone jack. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I yeah, left yeah. out the most it important. Was so funny. We we uh, on office hours because we, we were you know everyone was watching together. There's like 150 people watching in Zoom, and 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 we all laughed about it because the way they they built up the head. I've never seen anyone build up a headphone jack like that. The professional right. audio, you know, you could drive headphones for or, high or for high impedance or, headphones or a stereo. Oh, yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> Does it do know. high impedance? It's not a high impedance. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, 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 they it said is? they said high impedance. High impedance. Nice. They so they got a nice little amp, amp in there, yeah. Yeah. Sure. It was just funny. So, it was just so, funny. So, I've, never so, I've never seen a headphone jack built up so heavily than, than that but one but little but set also, of statements. But also, uh, do, do you, do you Honestly, feel it should be on the front. Here? I don't understand why it's on the well, back, to be honest. Okay, but but but, but I, I want to get back to feeling singled out for like abuse here. That No, no Andy, we couldn't put one on the uh, on your iPad. Uh, on your yeah, iPad. We yeah. couldn't put one, one on your phone. Yeah. We decided that... Uh... So, <laughs> I guess the reason it's on the back is because most people will be driving powered speakers with it and that's i mean that's what i will be doing i guess yeah but it's weird anyway <laughs> that's the weird part that's a little weird like that's all i'm saying uh, they could have yeah. put an optical port on there on the that front would have been nice yeah, exactly. on the front would have yeah. been nice optical on the back okay let's be we're being nitpicky at this point mm -hmm. well no but yeah and and also thunderbolt if you want to if you want that kind of ex, uh, like that's right deck, or if you want that's something right. like that plug it in that's right you got it yeah but well even the usb aas that's probably a good use uh, use for that yeah. um Okay, let, let's take another break. I really do want to talk about uh, uh, power, you know, and uh, it's particularly about GPU because that's – if there's one area where uh, professionals are going to say, but I need CUDA cores, it, you know, it's going to be in the GPU. So let's mm. – we'll talk a little bit about uh, that in just a second. Andy Anako uh, and uh, Mr. Alex Lindsay are with us. Renee is on assignment <laughs> he'll be back check, I'm, I'm, check, check his Instagram to see if he's on a plane somewhere. yeah he's uh, <laughs> yeah that's I'm curious by the way here from Scooter X the actual quote the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the MacBook Pro. oh no that's the MacBook Pro oh you gave me the MacBook Pro DC load detection and adaptive voltage output your Mac can detect the impedance of the connective device hmm well I guess that's I guess that's also going to be uh, be something like that in the uh, Mac Studio. It's going to be at least that good. Our show today brought to you by Better Help. Yeah, relationships take work. Yeah, a lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. Right? We'll go out of our way to treat other people well. But how often do you treat yourself that well? You deserve to be happy. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. Um, whether it's hitting the gym, it's making time for a haircut or a massage, or even, I don't know, trying therapy. You're your greatest asset. Invest the time and effort into yourself as you do for other people. BetterHelp is the better way to do therapy online Video, phone, live chat sessions with your therapist. You don't have to see somebody on camera or you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to. So in a way, it's kind of uh, it's kind of even more relaxing, more reassuring. And I can tell you, there is no shame in, in getting therapy. This is, this is all about you, you know? You get your nails done, you get your hair did, <laughs> you, you, you go out to the gym and you work out. Do a little something for your brain, for your for yourself. BetterHelp is online therapy, much more affordable than an in-person therapy. Uh, they'll, it's not, cri I want to be clear, it's not crisis therapy, uh, but but you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. You certainly don't have to suffer. Uh, give it a try. See why over 2 million people now have used BetterHelp online therapy. It uh, really is a great solution. Uh, bringing therapy to where you are. And they make it very easy, by the way, to change therapists, to find a therapist that's right for you. You say, why would I want to change? Well, you, uh, you know, every therapist is different, and uh, and you should have somebody that fits your 
uh, style, your personality is going to work with you the way you want to. That's the other thing. They do a lot of different modalities. Really, it's the best way. Why limit yourself to the, the therapists that are within, you know, driving distance of your house when you can have therapists all over the country, uh, one of whom is exactly right for you? I'm a big fan for this. They make it so easy. Betterhelp.com slash MacBreak. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P. Better help is better. And if they're there to help. Better help and MacBreak weekly listeners get 10% off their first month when you go to betterhelp.com slash MacBreak. Please do that. They do have couples therapy, by the way. If you want to, if you want to work on your relationship, you can. I don't want to imply that you can't. <laughs> you can do that. You work on yourself or your relationship. Uh, they also have uh, teen therapists. I, you know, especially because we've been in quarantine for two years, it's been really hard on kids. Really hard on kids. Uh, you know, high school is not the same as uh, we grew up with, and I think a lot of teens are struggling a little bit. This is a great way, and it's kind of non-intrusive way that they're very, they'll be comfortable with. They live on the phone, right? Uh, to get some support for your teen. So think about it for that as well. Betterhelp.com slash Mac break 10% off for your first month. Really happy to have these guys on our, uh, on our network because it's a very, very, very important uh, thing. Uh, all right. We haven't even gotten to the display yet. We'll get to the display in a second. But I do want to talk about GPUs because, you know, they spend a lot of time talking about how great these GPUs are compared even uh, the to the Radeons that they put in the top of the line Mac Pros. Notice there was no NVIDIA mention at all. <laughs> yep. Um, and Alex, you're the, you know, I always go to you to ask you about this because you, you're the pro user, you're the high-end user, you understand what pros want. And of course, you had 150 people in office hours watching this together. What was the reaction? What is the feeling about the GPUs? People are pretty excited, <laughs> you yeah. know, to say the least. You know, I think that, so that not everything is the GPU. A lot of it is the processing, the number of processors and how they handle it and how they, whether they can do it in parallel and, and so on and so forth. But... Um, on the other side of that, uh, RAM is a big deal. And here's why RAM is a big deal. is because it means you can hold larger texture maps and you can hold larger models in the RAM while you're processing. So by having more, more memory available to the GPU, it means that those you have much, much larger um, texture maps. That, that means that everything looks higher resolution than it did before. Um, so it may not, it, again, it may not be able to process as fast sometimes, it, it, so that might affect uh, do, handle effects and so on and so forth. But the amount of, of raw amount of uh, resources, so I can have 4K texture maps instead of 2K texture maps or 8K texture maps instead of 4K, you know, those kinds of things, I can start throwing much, much larger imagery and much, much larger models. It also means um, I can do things like oversampling. So oversampling is, I know you need a 4K image, but I'm going to render a 16K image and then I'm going to bring it back down to four. And what that does is it handles all the little aliasing, all the little jagged edges along the edge of the model. And so those are the kind of things that you can do when you have a lot of RAM. 128 gigs on the Ultra. Um, Boom. No, I don't like, think that, I mean, that's only the incredible. very highest end GPUs would have anything near that kind of. I've never seen a GPU with that much no. RAM. Okay. I think it's 48. I think 48 yeah. is the most I've ever yeah. seen. Right. But it's different. Again, this is a different architecture because you now have rarely do both the GPU and the CPU need all that RAM at one time. It's usually, it's oftentimes left kind of latent. So right. being able to share the, the shared memory architecture is incredibly important in this process. 800 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. Is that a good number? It's fast. <laughs> oh I, I don't know. I actually, I don't have a reference point for that. I, it's really it's fast. I, I, it's, I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what my current one is. I don't know what yeah, those yeah, ones are. Yeah. That's not, that's not a number I know. Yeah. 60 up to 64 core GPU. Um, but no, they're not CUDA cores. You don't get ray tra hardware ray tracing. Um, there are people who need that kind of stuff, right? And you don't not get Unreal many. Engine. <laughs> Like not not too many like like the ray tracing thing is cool, but it's not like 
you know, I did, uh, anyway, it's I did the whole, gaming, I did a, it's I did a big shiner <laughs> ship. I did a big shiny ship for a, for a space film without ray tracing. Without ray tracing. <laughs> so, so I, I kind of yeah. look at it like, oh, yeah. Yeah. but that was a long it's, time. It's, it, it looks great. But the, the, what's more interesting is when, when they start saying we can handle global illumination or physically based rendering in real time or something like that. Now you have my attention. Ray tracing is, is, is hard and I'm glad that they're able to do it. But it's the it's the global illumination stuff that is going to require a lot of RAM, <laughs> right? You know, to figure out, right? So. And you can do ray tracing in software. And it, in fact, somebody's saying, uh, uh, Dwindle's saying his Blender's cycle render does a pretty good job on the M1 mm -hmm. Max, but it's still faster on my 2080 Ti. Maybe, but now let's see what the Ultra. And it'll be interesting. I mean, I'm less inter I'm less worried about real time and more because you can get there's not many games or even anything real time that really takes advantage of most of these most of this hardware. What I'm really interested in is to see how does Cinema 4D, right? You know, do this. How does motion handle this? How does you know those types of things, you know, handle the processors yeah. that are there? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it's it, it's sad to say, but it's the case that um, Mac is not a gaming platform, and yeah, I mean, there's it's 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 a nice footnote to talk about, but the thing is, anybody who wants it, casual gamers have their needs well covered by other Apple products. People who are very very serious gamers who are going to be bemoan the fact that ooh, 60 hertz, that's not a, that's a, that's a terrible limit. They're all they're they're not going to be interested in Macs to begin with for reasons that go beyond. Uh, having an M1 uh, M1 Ultra processor in there, so I don't think that's a that's yeah. a big deal. I, th I, th I think that what they're uh, I, I'm, I'm just saying. I think I think that the the needs for the studio were uh, that really huge, rich vein of customers between entry level basic productivity Macs and super super graphic chunking number chunking uh, Mac Pros. We're talking about like the people who are creating videos on YouTube, make a, who have their own studio, like uh, uh, producing digital videos, who need that kind of power, but don't necessarily need to spend uh, need the kind of power they need to spend six thousand dollars for it. And I think that this is where they've they've aimed these two uh, processors and these the versions of the studio. And there's a, Apple could become a big player in real time games because I think that there's a real blind spot in the gaming community, which is they don't really have a broadcastable solution. They have a, a solution that gamers like to watch and they can fill a stadium once every once in a while with gamers, but they're, they're not really hitting the mark on building a truly broadcastable game. And until someone does that, Apple Apple could, you know, step into that market pretty hard, you know, and that's a, you know, an integrated game that scales to all the way down to your iPhone and, and Apple TV and all the way up to a Mac Pro and um, broadcasts and is able to broadcast. And then you throw a $10 million pot into it for the winner. <laughs> Things get <laughs> yeah. real inter interesting real quick, you know, like, you know, and that's the, and that, so Apple could I'd love convert to see that, that if they got, yeah. but they have to backfill all the hardware first. So I think that the, the, this could be something they did in a year or two after they have all of the stuff rolled out. Yeah, I, I think that we're looking at, I think they gave us a, a very clear map today of where their interests are in that kind of content. They, uh, they We did gloss over uh, the Apple TV Plus uh, section because it was meant to be because we were sort of yawning. Glossed over. <laughs> well, well, also, we're, we're, you know, cause, but, al but also one thing that really, really struck me was that they it, didn't just- I missed it because my eyes were closed. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but the, well, well, if your eyes were open <laughs> uh, and you were taking notes like I was, uh, like we were used to saying, uh, uh, oh, look how, look how popular Ted Lasso is Ted Lasso, Ted Lasso, Ted Lasso, whatever the lowest latest hit is. They really, really. I, I, I was, I was prepared to simply, oh great, I get I, uh, in this section. I've got of uh, this montage of what they're doing with Apple TV content. I get to spend the next. I, I, I didn't think that I could, I'd have time to move this streaming window to this other display. Now I have time to don't, don't to take notes. But man, they really did a good job of cutting together a montage of content that shows this is not just hey look we we hired some people who used to be on Friends to do like a an Andy's. Uh, to do a, a Sorkin style TV drama. It's like, no, they said, we have, here's the children's programming. Here are the people we hired away from Pixar. Here are super, super high named actors that we have in serious dramas. Here are comedies that we're doing. Here are, they really are flexing the idea that they're creating themselves as a real studio. And uh, it, it demonstrates that if they wanted to be, a, I think that if they wanted to be a game studio like that, they certainly could be doing that, but they apparent, I don't think that they want to. They're putting their money exactly where they want to go. And as far as uh, graphics performance, I think that they're also saying that uh, 
we are we feel that it's most important to uh, we, we want to make sure the content creators with our desktops have the tools they need to create the content that's going to be used uh, that's going to be targeted at our devices but i think that the future of the company is more leaning towards making sure that your handheld device has enough power to run this content your wearable future wearable device has enough uh, right. cpu gpu power to run this sort of stuff I, th I think that they made a lot of their intentions known just below the surface of most of the announcements they made today yeah um but before, before we move on, can I can I just mention one question that I still had? Uh, like I said, when they introduced uh, this, the the section for uh, the studio, they're mentioning here's what we wanted to accomplish: performance, connectivity, modularity. Uh, so we performance and connectivity are obvious. I'm trying to I'm still trying to work out what they meant by modularity, and I, I'm hoping that they meant it. Uh, every time I think about, well, maybe they meant that you can hook up external displays to it, but that's more like a connectivity thing. Well, they, they, they was, stack nicely. They, I mean, they, they they do they you can you, you can they're 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 like GPU Legos, uh, yeah, but exactly. I, I hope I hope that I hope that that means that uh, I, I mean this is a lost cause, but I hope that that means that it is possible to take this thing apart and service it uh, routinely without having to basically do a well oh, yeah I'm yeah. sorry I'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry your fan is making all that noise uh, we can give you a brand new one for eighteen hundred dollars because I'm afraid I'm afraid this is all built on the same this is all we all we three D printed the, the 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 fans the motors the the power supply the the CPU, the GPU, the memory, all out of one block of stuff. So we can't do any repairs that are any more than sending you a new one. Yeah, the 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 one thing that I I did notice when it comes to modularity, as we were talking about that, is that they um it oh no, it's just too tall to be a two U unit. That's so sad. Oh, that's interesting. So <laughs> oh, that's yeah, interesting. I, I was like, you wanted to wrap it, hit it right <laughs> on, and then I was like, Boy, I was like they did it perfectly. I thought it would be. Yeah. No, it's it's literally by two <laughs> by two tenths of an inch. Well, maybe so. you can shave it down or something. Apple's like, know. what is to you? And I'm more like, I don't think you understand. You know, I like, thought that's why you. they had the air coming out the back. I, I thought so too. I looked at, I was like, oh, they 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 hit this right on, and then I looked at the one U because I thought it was one point nine. That is the height of a one U. But it's actually 1.75. Yeah, so anyway, there we go. It's so sad. Yeah, well, I love the fact that I went from... Go ahead. I, I'd say, I love the fact that I had no idea what to you meant. And then as soon as I heard like someone in the studio go, oh, like, oh, boy, that that's that's a really <laughs> important thing. Whatever it was. <laughs> They, they, I'm not they didn't hit important. it. Important. <laughs> yeah. We, you know, we have racks, and these racks are how we rack all of our yeah. gear. And everybody knows you build a rack boundable device in in units of use. You don't build it some weird size. And and the great thing about the Mac Minis is they were all they fit very comfortably into a one U. So you just stack them all. You know, we had them racks of, I mean, literally racks of Mac Minis sometimes. And um, and so you're, I was like, oh, this will be perfect. It'll be two U. You can put two of them next to each other. Um, and then I, and I thought it was three, for some reason in my head, it was 1.9, but it's 1.75 for every U. And, uh, and so that means it'll, you'll have to use three, a three U. Um, <sighs> we didn't have all that gap above it, which I hate. Yeah. So uh, ugly. Right. So ugly. So, uh, already, what did we get? uh, sh yeah. you get? let's talk about What'd what we bought now? already. The ship times are slipping. Uh, oh, yeah, they did say you yours. ordered today. You could get it on March 18th. Not anymore. No. Uh, I was lucky because before Tim stopped talking, they opened up the store on the phone. John noticed that. So I ran in and I ordered the uh, Ultra for uh, delivery on the 18th. So we'll do an unboxing on the 18th. Uh, I think it's on track. And I, I I didn't upgrade it much. Let's just quickly look at because you could easily get it to ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. You can only get it to like six or seven. Oh shoot! Or six oh, thousand. Fifty fifty six hundred. So I the the base model has a twenty core CPU and a forty eight core GPU. For a thousand dollars more, you can get just a little more GPU. Do you think who should do that, uh, Alex? Anybody? That's a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When people who are doing, yeah, if you're doing, doing heavy graphics. things that are have, that are GPU heavy, okay. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the base model, 64 gigs. I, I stuck with that. For 800 bucks, you could go to 128 mm -hmm. gigs. I know you will because you like more memory. Yeah. I didn't. You didn't. 64 I, I, is a lot of unified memory. Uh, I, 
I actually I had some constraint. I, I had I had there was a little budgetary. Uh, yeah, I just Car Carlita is looking it. over your shoulder as you had it, but I was like, <laughs> I don't. Uh, now, where you really can go crazy uh, and get the price up is with storage. Uh, but the base model has more than this. Is the Ultra, by the way? Uh, it's twice as much as the Max version of the studio, but the Ultra has a terabyte, which is enough, I think, for anybody. Um, you can easily go to two terabytes, another four hundred bucks. That's reasonable. Eight terabytes is another two thousand two hundred bucks. So <laughs> maybe you might not want to uh, uh, do that. So what did you get? I, I, so what I got just to complete the thought is uh, all of that with the one, just basically base model. I don't think I ordered anything extra. No, yeah, base I, model. I really wanted the ultra, and I really ended up just getting the. I, I got the. I, I, You're I don't probably need sensible. It. Yeah. Like, so I, I may get it eventually. I just like that. I I'm building my little, I'm rebuilding my studio. And I was like, if I spent all of that money on, on this, <laughs> my studio will be very, no, yeah. very slowly. You, you were so actually I, wise. I think that, I think the ultra is probably over, certainly overpowered for me. I only got it so we could talk about it, review it. Uh, for yeah, Lisa I, and her home office, I got the, the max version of it. Yeah. And I got, I got I the, I got plenty. the, I kind of got a pretty loaded max. I didn't put it, get as much hard drive space. So I got one terabyte, yeah. but I got, I kind of maxed the rest of it. I got the 64 gigs and I got the fat, the fat, slightly better processor. And I, I just felt like, I mean, I'm just, I don't do enough that I felt like I needed the, and I have to admit, I'm kind of one now. I now want to see what the, I, I, I know that the max will get me. I went into this, I went into the keynote wanting a max, right? Like that was what I yeah. really wanted for what right. I needed. And I felt like, I don't even know if I do things that make the other one worth it yet. And I'm just, I'll buy one of those if it does. If something's going to pay for it, I'll, yeah. I'll buy it, but yeah. I don't need it right now. Yeah. So there are more processor choices for the um, studio with the Max. You can even put an ultra processor in it. But if you want 128 gigs of RAM, you have to get the uh, MK, M1, M, I almost said MK Ultra, the M1 Ultra <laughs> uh, version of the studio. Uh, out of the box but you can you can you know yeah. get the full processor available if you didn't need all the ram oh wait a minute basically they do let you you just basically building now you're building an ultra uh yeah, i mean i i yeah so i i did you know you can build an ultra inside yeah. of this thing but i yeah. went for 60 mine's like 2800 dollars, and it was i felt like i haven't i think I, that's a it was it's a lot and i think you're gonna get a is. great uh computer that will I'm sure it would be better than your iPro, your Mac, uh, iPro, yeah. Mac Pro. I have a 2017 iMac Pro. Ma iMac. No, I actually have a 2017 iMac because the Pro came out after I bought it. Oh, it my. came out later. That's okay. how old it is. Yeah. And so, and it still works great. You know, I'm going to keep it, you know, for other things, but, but the, but I, I just really wanted to get something modular and I felt like I don't, again, I, I, I felt like I'd be overbuilding if I, if I got. I usually buy the fast, as you know. I usually kind of deck these things out, but I was like six six thousand five hundred bucks or or fifty five hundred dollars. I was like, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I got to say, this is this this is the exactly the Mac that I've been waiting for for a number of years. I agree. Yeah, and so I, and my 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 wallet. I I had to upgrade so much hardware over the past like eighteen months that my wallet is still recovering. I'm going to give it some time. To, to, I'm going I'm to give it some time to you know get its breath back. But middle of the year, end of the year, uh, I'm so looking forward to having having one of the the Max versions of these. Ship dates are slipping now. The uh, Max is uh, March 23rd, and the Ultra is as uh, the earliest is April 13th. So it's just, and when, once I spec mine, mine was May 30th to April yeah. 6th. So. I'm actually glad I I jumped in there, but uh, I tried and it wasn't opening for me. It was like I couldn't. It was on the phone. I couldn't get in. As often the case, the iOS uh, Mac sto Apple Store is often sometimes uh, faster. All right, we're going to uh, take a little another little break and then let's talk about the monitor because there's some interesting things to say about uh, this monitor. It's Apple getting back into the not the super high end Pro monitor, but a regular monitor. Back to the right. days of cinema Pretty displays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that in uh, just a little bit. Uh, Alex Lindsay's here, officehours.global. Did you record that uh, watching the event? Because boy, I'd like to see the comments. We didn't. We didn't. Oh. It was. It was. Uh, we we don't record those. We, uh, After hours doesn't record, but we. Uh, but I think we by the end we were at a hundred. Sorry, I got something coming up. My yeah, head. yeah. Um, 
because I would really, but of course I'm working, so I can't, I can't be in the office hours, <laughs> but uh, maybe next time we'll stream office hours and forget uh, coming in and let you guys handle that. Cause so I would fun. love to hear what all those pros in office hours have to say as, uh, as it was, you know, it's, it is where it is. It's a, it's a really, it's the geekiest water cooler in the world. Yeah. And so having <laughs> 150 people who are geeky watching it together and talking about it and everything else. Now we, we, yeah. And so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. I honestly think that, um, uh, there is, it, it's, while it's fun to watch, it's probably best not to do what I did and Alex did, but to wait a week or two, let the dust settle, hear what possible negatives there are, maybe even see some reviews. So we're not advocating that you do what we talked about. Did. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's, but it was uh, just it, it hit just the right spot for what I wanted. Yeah. You know, like in that. And so. and and frankly, uh I order that quickly because I because we're trying to get review we don't do review units from Apple. We try to buy them and yeah. uh, we wanted to get them in as soon as possible so we can talk at them, uh talk about them and I'll let you know. But I the last ship date I saw was uh a week from Friday. So we'll do an right. unboxing on a Friday afternoon. Uh, our show today brought to you by New Relic. You've been there. We've all been there. If you're a software engineer and network administrator, sysop, you're nice and cozy in bed, fast asleep, snoring away. The phone rings. Something's wrong. Something's broken. The network's down. The software's not running. And, of course, your heart starts pounding. Your mind's racing. You're jumping out of bed in the middle of the night. What could be wrong? And that's the problem. What could be wrong? You don't know. Is it the back end? Is it the front end? Is it the, a global problem? Is it a local problem? Is it your server? Is it the network? Is it the cloud provider? Do we have slow running queries? Is our database broken? Did I introduce a bug in my last deploy? That's the one you don't, I hope not. But now you got your whole team scrambling. They're, they're going from tool to tool, scratching their heads, messaging. Do you see it? I don't know what's going on back and forth. That is not the way to run an operation. Unfortunately, it's a way about half the organizations in the world do it. According to New Relic, they did a report only about half of all organizations have implemented observability for their networks and their systems. Maintaining network observability is an issue for companies around the world, but this is not going to happen if you have New Relic. New Relic's all about getting the answer to those questions fast fixing the problem and getting back in bed before you even fully awake. That's the goal, right? New Relic combines 16 different monitoring products you'd normally buy separately. Because they're all integrated together, your team can see across the entire software stack in one place. You get 16. I'll give you, I'll give you a handful of them. But there's the application monitoring system, APM, which gives you unified monitoring for your apps, your microservices. If a service goes down, you'll know immediately and you'll know which one and you'll know where and why and you can fix it fast. If you use Kubernetes, you'll love Pixie. Instant Kubernetes observability. Uh, all your traces are distributed. No more, you know, you can see all your traces without having to jump through a bunch of hoops. Find and fix issues fast. There's network performance monitoring that gets past the silo and gives you a system-wide correlated view. No more fog. You get to see it all. You get to see it all clearly. And that's just four of the 16 products. You can It's so accurate, you can pinpoint issues down to the line of code. So if, there's, if you did push a breaking update, you can find it fast and fix it. That's why the dev and ops teams at DoorDash and GitHub and Epic Games and more than 14,000 other companies use New Relic to debug and improve their software. I don't know how. If you don't have it, I don't know how. You've survived without it. Can I tell you the best part? You can do it right now for free. Look, that middle of the night call is just waiting to happen. Get New Relic before it does. Get the whole New Relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data free every month for the rest of your life. You don't even need to give them a credit card. Look, if you want to try it free forever, no credit card needed, just go to newrelic.com slash MacBreak. Is it the server? Is it the network? You may not know, New Relic knows, N-E-W-R-E-L-I-C dot com slash Mac break. I think that's an incredible offer. No credit card needed. They can't charge you. You get the whole platform and 100 gigabytes of data a month, which is a lot, free forever. New Relic dot com slash Mac break. Please use that address so they know you saw it here. New Relic dot com slash Mac break. 
So I went back and forth because I had just bought, I'm such an idiot. You heard me talk about it last week. A brand new 4K monitor for Lisa, big 31 inch. Brand new Brio camera for Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, oh, because she wants, she's doing a lot of podcasts. She's doing a lot of video. She's still doing a lot of work from home. She needs a nice setup. She's earned it. She deserves it. She works really hard. She has that beautiful 49-inch display, that Dell display. Um, and she's going to, we want to replace the iMac because it's an eight-year-old iMac. So I want to pull that out. This is a great iMac replacement. I thought, oh, I'm going to get into the monitor too. The studio display, not what was rumored. They were talking about, oh, it's going to be 7K, blah, blah, blah. No, this is, in fact, a normal monitor, 27 inches, uh, 5K, not 7K, uh, True Tone. Interestingly, it has an A13 Bionic in it. Yes, it's got a processor. That's to drive the ultra-wide camera, does the center stage thing. It's got uh, full array mics in there, Uh Apparently, it's got great audio too. I mean, I, I'll have to, I'll hear it when I believe it. Uh, but apparently, it's got something like six speakers in there and a subwoofer and and all of that stuff. Uh, it's got three 10 gigabit, U, I'm sorry, gigabyte USB C ports, uh, one to Thunderbolt 4 port. So, it's a very nice monitor. When I'm hearing them talk about it, I'm thinking that's a $2,000 monitor. In fact, I hope they can get it in it under $2,000, $1,599. So I had to buy it for Lisa. She's she's earned it. She she'd say, "What? You only got me the Max." I'm gonna say, "But I got your monitor too." <laughs> and this for camera and everything. I think this is gonna be a good uh, a good choice. Yes. Yeah. It really it really seems more like an accessory than a monitor. It seems as though it's it's delivering so much, uh, so so many features be, beyond simply here is a way to look at the pixels that are imaginary inside the CPU. Uh, the, the fact well, that for instance, got, it can power a laptop. So yeah. it's your dock. It's really a dock well, as much as a monitor, right? Yeah, and and, and also the fact that it's got its own A13, A13 Bionic chip inside. Yeah, it's like how how, how how soon before someone figures out how to get this thing to run Doom without anything plugged into it? <laughs> well, what this, but it, it confirms what I, my feelings that this is really we're not going to do another iMac. We're not going to do another iMac Pro or yeah. high end iMac. We're going to decouple them. It's the iMac deconstructed. And this would be the monitor of an iMac, right? With a T2 right. chip and all that. The uh, audio. And right. the audio, right? Great, great camera, it, it, great microphones, great audio. This is this is designed spatial. so Spatial. It does spatial, spatial audio. audio. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's not the, it's not the, there's still an iMac. If you want something all in one, there's still a very fast iMac that but does. But it's 24 it inches. It's but really. The, but that's. But that's. I think, machine, yeah. But I don't. But the Pro is gone. I think that if you're a Pro, yeah. this you're is going to get the Studio or yeah. the Pro or the Mini or whatever. And that's the, the right way to go. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. It's yeah. got the little tray for your uh, your fat boy. Um, I actually got Lisa the there's there's three different arms. Uh, not a thousand dollars, by the way. Thank God. <laughs> uh, there's a regular arm. There's one that uh, uh, tilty, swoopy, doopy, kind of like a iMac thing, and then there's a Visa mount. Uh, I ended up getting her the middle one because I think she it might be nice for her to be able to tilt it around and up and down and all that stuff. Um, anything else to say about this? It's interesting that Apple, I mean, it's, which it's, ab it's, Apple abandoned this market. They said, "No, go get somebody else's monitor." I think I think part of the problem is is it's really hard to find good displays for Macs, like that really take advantage of what the Mac can do. And so I think that Apple had to take care of this market because they they build this kind of unified experience, and then you have, you know, all the monitors that you try to buy the Dell monitors, and I have five Dell monitors. Yeah, that's right what now. I bought her a beautiful yeah, Dell a 4K. Wonky. It was six hundred bucks. It's not expensive. It's no, a half price. But they don't take full advantage of what the Mac can do, and yeah. they're kind of you're know, like, oh, they're fine. Like they're cheap, you know. So you buy them. But but the um, but I think Apple needed to get back into it because. It, it especially if you're going to move to this modular look, this the, the Mac Minis and the Mac Studios and the and the Mac Pros, you gotta you gotta be able to control that pipeline all the way through. So I think that that's part of it. Is that really that yeah. it, it, it's if we're going to make an iMac, we gotta make the monitor. If you're too. not going to make the iMac Pro, you're going to yeah, have to make the monitors make the that will support it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's I mean, they 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 have nothing they have nothing to really offer in terms of 
giving someone a standard display unless they want to someone wants to spend five thousand dollars for an absolutely best in class uh, panel. Uh, but what they can do is make a very human oriented display that that reflects the fact that in the past five years. Uh, a, a microphones and a webcam have gone from a weirdo thing that some weirdos who do podcasts have, and some some people who chat with their grandchildren over uh, over Skype do, to a basic part of the comp- of the human computing experience, uh, the, the, and also the ability to do everything via one wire through thunder uh, through uh, Thunderbolt has also uh, created this opportunity to make things very very tidy and very very clean. And uh, sixteen hundred dollars is still more than I can spend on an external display. But if uh, if if uh, if certain deadbeats from five or six years ago came finally came through on checks, <laughs> and, I, and I decided, hey, I, w- I wasn't expecting to get this four thousand dollars. I might, you know, this is this is the sort of thing I might blow that money if your on aunt because Debbie passes. Yes, your great aunt. No, Debbie, no, 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 yes. no. I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking about. I'm, I'm I'm a survivor of many many publishing ventures. Oh, I'm like, sorry. Oh. We pay you, by the way, on time, right? Ex- you're on you're time not talking about well. us. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> exactly. No. 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 <laughs> That's one of the reasons. Lisa needs a nice computer and a nice monitor so that you get paid on time. So think of it that way. Exactly. Right? <laughs> uh, in fact, this is the tagline on Apple's uh, site: "Fits right in." You yeah. know, that's exactly what they're saying. This is uh, this is for somebody who wanted to buy an iMac Pro. Um, I mean, when you when you think about like what I've just bought with that, I didn't. I'm not getting that display right now, but but the um, but if you look at what I just bought. You're talking thirty five, you know, thirty five hundred dollars, or maybe almost four thousand dollars, and now you have this incredible display with a very fast computer. I mean, it's it's it, what's what's crazy is now the performance per dollar is going, you know, the performance per dollar is getting better and better and better with the Mac. Instead yeah. of it, for a long time, it felt like it was going the other direction. We're like, we really love the operating system, but the the computers are just, you know, they're good enough. But now it's just. It's well, incredible. I remember when they came out with the 5K iMac, and that was great. But the problem is, you buy that and you're done. I mean, this but is. But you even- also never felt like you never felt like you were buying the fastest, best computer. You were buying the best one within the ecosystem yeah. that you that we've chosen. And we know that it'll be a little bit slower, and we know that it's a little bit more, res- you know, constrained. But but we love Apple. You know, we love our OS, and you know, we don't want to yeah. use PCs. So so I think that there was there was a little bit of that. Now, as a Mac user, you're kind of like I'm gonna, you know, buying the fastest thing I can get for the dollar, and uh, and it's you know a Mac. So. so they also offer uh, the nano texture glass, which the XDR uh, pioneered. The glass mm-hmm. you're not supposed to touch. Um, I hope they include the the polishing cloth. That'd be a nineteen dollar <laughs> uh, value. Yeah. Uh, uh, should I have? I didn't get the nano glass. That's. I didn't. No, I won't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just. No, I wouldn't get it. Just checking. Just checking with my consult. Consultant, if you're sorry, in a, folks. If, if, I, what I wanted them to say is, is if you if you're in a in a bright environment with your computer, you should get blinds. Get blinds. They're cheaper <laughs> like, you know, and like, they're better. Like, yeah. It's just like I, I'm I, I'm it's abhorrent to me to put something on the screen to improve my my lighting. I I close everything down pretty quickly. Now like, here's okay. something they didn't mention, but I see this in the fine print: the A13 Bionic chip built into the monitor. In, enables features like center stage, spatial audio, and Hey Siri. Uh, that makes more sense. I was trying to figure that out. I was, I was like, I got to research a little bit of that. I was like, what's the? So you can talk to the monitor. <laughs> um, yeah. No, hmm. that, that 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 makes a lot of sense because that the 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 the, the gatekeeper for that feature is uh, is an ASIC that just simply is always powered and is always listening for a hot word, as opposed mm-hmm. to keeping a big CPU lit up all the time. Uh, so yeah, it's. That makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Again, it's an access. It, it's the first time that Apple's done a monitor as a real accessory, as opposed to just a screen with some ports on it. Yeah, and it it is it is something that is specifically not just a monitor. So you, as a Mac user, I mean, I think I'll, it's somewhere in my future. The problem is, is that I want to be able to route lots of different computers to the same monitor. So it doesn't make as much sense for me. But otherwise, uh, it's you know, if you're just using like a normal person, um, it is uh, it, it is an incredible addition to what the what the computer already does. Yeah. Yeah, what what else is on there? That the I'm, 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 secret I'm, I'm tech specs. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, well, that 
uh, like if they're uh, secure enclave ships that could take advantage of essentially, essentially the presence it, it's it makes more sense now to think of that as a way to bring iPhone exclusive features to the Mac because exactly. all the stuff that requires that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, you got an A13 so you, in there. Yeah. So if you want to do mm-hmm. Face ID uh, on a monitor, that seems like a future oh, a bit, opportunity. Oh, Andrew, yeah. There's no lidar though. It's just a 12 megapixel right. camera. Uh, they do offer a variety of reference modes, so they are kind of verging into the pro uh, sphere. It's P3, Apple Display, but also BT709 and 601, uh, P3D C. 709 is what everything's been. Everything's, <laughs> everything's what you want is 709. What you're looking for is BT2020. Is, is, okay. That's what it doesn't do. Okay. The other one, and, and but the P3 is good. And, and 600 nits is, you know, that's part of why the price goes down. 600. The difference between 600 nits and 1600 or that's 1500 nits that the other yeah. one is, is a big difference when yeah. it comes to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, 122 degree field of view, center stage. So it moves around. I like center stage and they do it su- more subtly than say the Facebook portal. I, I wish that there was, I do wish that center stage would let us tweak it just a little bit. So you could say like, focus on this much. instead of just well, follow me around. I would like to have little things like less headroom. Yeah. Like yeah. it, it yeah. likes, it no, naturally goes Terrible. to like, old, yeah. it, it, it naturally goes to old fashioned TV headroom. It like 20, you. 20, it's like action. Yeah. It's like action safe, but, but that's not what we do on the internet anymore. No. Like we're dipping into the, you yeah. know, right up to the edge. Yeah. And it just always feels uncomfortable. Like, like every time someone's on center stage, I'm like, wow, they got a lot of headroom. Oh, there's a question from my lover in our IRC. Maybe you can airplay to the monitor. I think, hmm. I, I'm very curious. A13 has got a lot that's of power, a, that's and a lot my more whole than thing, you need normally. So right? I, I, I kind of feel like you could. I mean, with an A13, you could theoretically do Apple Arcade. You know, it's or an have, Apple TV. What is in the Apple TV? That's the Apple TV. Uh, the newer one has, I think, the A14. I think, okay. but it's. Maybe. I mean, it's. It could be an Apple could do, TV. It, it could totally do an app. What an Apple TV does in the monitor, like it could just be a. It could be a. Oh my goodness! It could be a TV. Like, like, like literally. Well, they do show, <laughs> you know, it's like they're they not, do they're show foundation close. playing on it, but unfortunately it says requires Apple TV. So, yeah. uh, right. But, but you could, I mean, you, this is there, they are now like right up on the oh, edge. Oh, they're doing, that's the TV is what you're saying. They could literally, if they made yeah. it twice as big and just next they, they're year, now, they're, yeah, next year, they're verging on a TV, aren't they? It could be. Yeah, that's it. And that's only, I think that's the 2019, I'm looking it up right now, but I think that's the mm-hmm. 20, that was in the 2019 iPhones. So it's not as though they no. just had a, no, a hamper full of old chips. Yeah. Yeah, well, they is, might have, who free. knows? Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's like, <laughs> this is, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a current generation chip. So it's not as though it, so basically okay, and, it can do stuff. But basically, if if you bought if you bought an iPhone like two or three years ago, it had this chip. So basically, it's not as though you've been orphaned behind by features that uh, that are only available uh, in the A14. So yeah. that's, that's that is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if I wonder if they. I'm 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 sure that I'm just like you know <laughs> that, that, that that's beard stroking here, but boy, wouldn't it be great if there was you bought one and you're happy with it because of all the features of a monitor, and then like in the fall they said, oh by the way, uh, there's going to be a software update for your monitor that turns it into an Apple TV that makes it into an AirPlay target that does all these things because that's a that's a hell of that's a very interesting chip to put into that display to just do things like run the camera <laughs> and they the, do that. It, yeah. They do it. They they do these kinds of things where they put chips in. The, the, the ultra wideband was in a lot of ca- right. phones before they even started down talking the about road. It. Yeah, it does say. Interestingly, it has a list of the Macs that it's compatible with, but it also is compatible with the iPad Pros and the iPad Air fifth generation. Yeah. So I guess you. Could, oh, that's really interesting. That is interesting, isn't it? I, uh, that they even put it in there. Is but but having it having a TV with an A14 is oh it, my. There's a lot that they can oh do that my. they're not doing right now. Yeah, yeah, like when you think now that my head's getting wrapped around it, I'm because at first I was like, why would they do that? And now I, it's oh. a TV. Yeah, not yet, but soon, maybe. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Put an M1 in there. Go for it. Exactly. <laughs> they got a lot of them. They're easy. They make them fast. TSMC can crank them out as Here's much. Here's an 80 inch TV with oh. an M1. <laughs> oh. You know. You know what? That's a product I'd be interested in. That's very Apple. For six thousand dollars to back $8, into it. Yeah. To back yeah. into it like that. Well, you get good at it. You you also are driving the price down of the components and right. everything else, and so and and you're figuring it out. You know, like it, you can. Pro a pro app, a pro display with a couple extras is great, and you can do a little surprise and delight with a, you know, with an extra, um, you know, being able to turn it on, and make it an Apple TV. But you wouldn't want to come out of the gate trying to figure this out with a consumer device. Right, exactly. so. 
Yeah. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't even want to hint at it. Yep. So it's, yep. it's up to people like us to make people start to expect these things by saying, ooh, wouldn't it be exciting if we do this? Yeah. Now now we expect it. Like now every every Apple thing will be like, <laughs> well, it's not the TV. The TV we know we is coming. We expect surprises and delights. How dare well, you here's not the surprise other thing. us? <laughs> here's the other thing is, is that if you are going to go into AR and if you are going to do some of those things, having the TV be able to interact having a brain, a brain of its own allows the display to interact with the, the, the AR device in a much, much tighter way than going through the computer. So there's a bunch of things that it, it could know and be able to do it. So this also could be setting up for an AR integration. I was very surprised. I really thought with the, uh, with the name peak P double E K performance mm -hmm. that we might see or hear or get a hint of, uh, AR VR, uh, the rumor mill was, that might've been it. A13? You think that's it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I, think, uh, I, I think that I think that once again, in a, in, a, in a casual office somewhere in the spaceship, there are people who are cracking open beers, having a good laugh at all those people. All we meant was that we're going to give you a peek at some of the performance that we could. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that they thought that there's going to be a hovercraft in October. <laughs> well, the rumor still says there will be a VR headset by the end of the year. Uh, there'll be plenty more for Apple to announce. As we mentioned at the beginning of the show, at the end of their... Uh, show they Tim Cook said, and the Mac Pro, don't forget, or maybe right. it was John Turnus, the Mac Pro is still to come. The one more piece of the puzzle, uh, yeah. and, and well, that was important they, too because it also said, "That's it. We're not going to do an iMac Pro. Right. We're not yeah. going to do a mini Mac Pro. There's well, maybe they will, but there's a Mac Pro, and then that'll be it. And honestly, <laughs> this studio for me is all the Mac Pro I'd ever want. I mean, this is exactly what I would want a Mac Pro or a mini oh, yeah. Mac Pro to be." I can just say that they're feeling pretty cocky when they start talking about it. Like, hey, we got one more. One more. One more. You know, like, we, we got something else coming. And, you know, like, because, you know, the, if you're going to call it a Mac Pro, if, if the Mac, if the studio looks like this, the Mac Pro has to be 1.5 to two times faster yeah. minimum. That's what they've you been know, doing. You know, like it's every step, minimum and every probably step. three or four eggs. Yeah. And so it's it's going to be a thing. So is it M1 or M2? M2. Is it, it's M2. M2. It's M2. probably quad die. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I mean the Mac Pro again with the Mac Pro, you can make the die a lot bigger. Like they can't fit it into that with it, but you could make a, a much larger die if you wanted to on a on a larger form factor. So, yeah, F from the beginning, I've always I, I'm I, I think obviously it's it's no uh, it's no. Uh, random chance that they're saving the Mac Pro for last because that's oh, so yeah. and I, and I think that's also very very canny for them to say by the way this is if you are if you're waiting for the most powerful Macs that we are going to make with the first generation uh, Apple silicon do not buy this one please hold on well, to your money because we've got more to do but I've always thought that man when they decide when they decide that we don't care about power per watt so much we don't care about heat because we'll put in fans we don't care about making a small trim attractive box all we want to do is make faces melt that's going to be something to see it also freezes i mean it's at this point it's got to start freezing people's purchases on high-end pcs because yeah. it's you know that like if they just saw what that just did and they think that one's going to go the other direction without without too much with the price you know uh, there's there i think there's some companies that are going to be like oh i might might not buy that you know that big nvidia machine uh, you know, we, we might wait a little bit longer to see what Apple does with that, and it doesn't fix anything. It's people on a pa on a that need it right now, um, or people that are, uh, you know, on a pat on a on a schedule aren't going to change what they're doing. But I think people who used to be on the Mac went to the PC um, and are thinking to buy another big machine might wait just a little while to see yeah. what happens. What do you think the people at Intel? are thinking right now they're they are uh, i can't say what they're, i don't think i can say what yeah what it's just like they are they gotta be super worried i wonder if we get apple to make those chips in our factory right, <laughs> they just thinking. talked about how we're just getting we're, we're as fast as the m1 and then no. uh, like, okay yeah. well, let's. well we you know what i knew that they said that they they, they had to say that then because it was only going to be true for a very short period of time. I mean, the, the problem is, is they, 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 I think when they said it, they looked at Apple and they said, they said, why are you still smiling? He says, because I'm not left-handed. <laughs> yeah. uh, the um, I'm sure there's a joke and I'll have to uh, have, I mean, have I mean, it's explain okay. It's, it's, it's a little Princess Bride reference. Oh, Princess yeah. Bride. Oh, yeah, left-handed. I get yeah. it. I get it. <laughs> Like, yeah, Why so. are you smiling? <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's well, good, I, I actually. Should... I like it. That's exactly what's going on. <laughs> you are very good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, quick point out, Colm, Colm Jackson on Twitter pointed out that the new monitor actually has a better CP, more modern CPU than the 4K, uh, 4K Apple TV. The 4K only has an A12 Bionic. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. My thoughts exactly. Okay. They got an Apple TV in there. They're better. Yeah. Very interesting. What Apple is up to is mind boggling. Uh, and they are absolutely showing that the move to Apple Silicon was the right thing to do. They oh, yeah. even showed that in some respects, the uh, Ultra is faster than the Xeons, the top of the line Xeon Mac Pro. I, I, I'm sorry, I, was, I just think about the last comment. I realized you could be watching Apple TV while you're doing something else on the Mac and the monitor could just give it both, but the, the TV part wouldn't be processed on the Mac at all. Picture like in picture. Part. Yeah. It'd be picture in picture, but yeah. it, you know, it's... Just a little picture in picture running off the 813 yeah. Bionic. No big. <laughs> hey Siri. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Play Ted Lasso again. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Or or put a get a really really big stack of of uh, of battery packs behind it and turn it into a giant iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm making a call. <laughs> all all we all we <laughs> lack is the that's, will to That's to why excel. I got the visa mount so I could have this headset with a visa mount on it. <clears throat> God, this creep on the subway was looking over my shoulder while I was texting on my 27-inch iPhone. <laughs> what a creep. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, it, th I guess we should do picks. I, do, you, do you guys want to do picks? Um, I know what my pick is. An ultra! <laughs> Andy, Andy, what's your pick of the week? Uh, I had a very quick one because I didn't really plan ahead for this. Uh, this is the 20th anniversary of one of my favorite TV dramas, certainly my favorite cop drama ever, uh, The Shield, uh, which de debuted on FXX 20 years ago. Uh, and I won't give you the big talk up. Uh, the all I'll take, it's on Hulu. Uh, it's seven years. I think it's, I don't think there's ever been a more successful continuing drama on TV where it's not where they, they decided to say, oh, here's the, here's the, uh, here's this concept. And we have the first six episodes mapped out. And, but we got shocked. We were not ready to be successful. And so we had nothing, we had no ideas after season three or season four. Uh, it is all about the, this, all se seven seasons, which I saw like when they first aired is all about what happens during the pilot. Uh, it's one of the most meaningful pilots, and they s absolutely stuck the landing with the final episode. I don't think there's ever been a better final final episode, particularly of a drama. So I'm so that that that's all I'll say. It's, it is it is. Uh, it is amazing uh, the intensity they got, the characterization, the storylines they got. By the time you get to the end of it, it's just this earthquake of consequences finally coming to bear after seven whole seasons so all i'll say is that go on go on to hulu if you subscribe watch the pilot i th absolutely absolutely watch the pilot obviously watching seven seasons of a draw of a drama is a big ask but i think that if you even if you don't get into the entire story it will be one of the best 40 something minutes of television you've ever seen and it will probably hook you into thinking what the hell happens after this and you'll it'll be it's one of those terrible things where you, well, i'll just watch the f a few episodes episodes in the first season just to see how this pays out and then like three weeks later you're canceling stuff because oh my god what the hell is going to happen in the final three episodes i'm watching uh, you know i really mocked hulu for a long time i realized i'm watching a bunch of stuff on hulu all of a sudden including the dropout it's, and uh, pam and tommy which is trashy but i love it, it if you can fight your way through that terrible Awful interface, interface, there's some good content there. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm shocked at how much like I'll uh, I'll be watching something during lunch, and then I want to come back to that exact same show the next episode during dinner, and the number of times I have to click my remote after getting into the Hulu app to get back to the thing I was just watching is atrocious. And but some of the oh, content I agree 100. percent Actually, yeah. all of these programs are terrible, terrible. Netflix. You go ahead and try to find the thing you were just watching mm -hmm. or the new thing that no, I mean it's crazy they're all, I whoever's yeah. doing their UIs I actually got so complicated I actually have in my obsidian notebook a list of movies I started or shows I've started shows I've finished <laughs> and now I've added the shield to shows I want to watch and then next to it I have to put what app it's on because I can never keep track right of any that's of that, stuff. that too I mean it's crazy I, I love I love Reno 911, but this is the second time since it was canceled off of Comedy Central that 
there are new episodes for the original cast, the original writers, but it's on another streaming network that I can't subscribe to Roku just to watch this one show. Like I, I can't I can't subscribe to Peacock or whatever Paramount Plus or whatever it was. As, to say nothing of try, just trying to figure out what channel it's on. Like you, there, you've oftentimes I'll be I'll be reading a review that is on, like on AV Club or whatever that oh wow this got me really this got me really interested, but it doesn't say what streaming service it's on or when it starts, so I it, it slips out of my mind. It's hard. This is this is one of the reasons why I keep going coming back to to Plex. That you know I buy. It's like I. I'll buy a movie. I'll rip it. I'll put it onto Plex, and it's there for me. It yeah. will tell me like here's Smart. here. Oh, here's what you were just watching yesterday. If you want to continue where you left off, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I agree with you. Alex Lindsay's got a pick of the week. Go ahead, Alex. A Rubik cube. <laughs> I, I'd like to thank I like to thank Chris Fenwick, who's uh, in office hours, and and he. Uh, there's been a bunch of discussions about. Rubik's cubes, and he's very fast at it. I'm horrible at it, but but I got excited about it because he was talking about it. And he was you know watching him do it, and I was like, okay, which one is that? And he's like, oh, this one's really really good. And so these is, are not you know, the officials Rubik cubes. No, these this are is not. And I got to tell you, as someone who cubes, grew up with one, speed cubes. <laughs> as someone who grew up with one, this is an entirely different level. Yeah, because it was always so hard to turn it and squeak no, it. No, so yeah. this one has so. This it's, one. It better be good for things. sixty-four dollars. No, mine's seventy-one. $71. Oh my <laughs> god! You have so, to be very dedicated to the Rubik. Yeah. Well, the lifestyle. thing is, it's got magnets in it, so when you spin it, it just stops. You know, so you can it'll, oh, it'll like find it. it. Sounds good too. It has a nice. It's the the the, the movement, and here's the, the better part about it is it's not just that the movement is really nice. It's that it has. Oh, I, I misplaced it, but hold on. Did it you get the stickerless kit. one or the sticker one? <laughs> Uh, you can get one without mine. stickers that you put your oh, stickers on. Again. Yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 it comes with an, a, these little adjustable wrenches to change oh, them. It's, yeah, like, it's like, basically like, uh, uh, the a unholy uh, child of a Rubik's Cube and a, and a fidget yeah. spinner. Together at last. ruin everything. No, it is, it is the <laughs> ultimate fidget spinner. Because I sit there and I, I'm just like, you know, just like... Doo, 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 doo. It's got like a I'm, numerical variable nut. Yeah, and so so you can actually change it. And, and when you watch, this is like what the like the folks who do competition. This yeah, is yeah. the competition, it's a competition cube. Rubik's cube. Yeah, you know, and yeah. and it's uh and so it is and it's it's quite a pleasure. And I have to admit that if you're if I'm in a really really uh, slow meeting, most of the time I'm the one talking, so it doesn't so I don't use this very much. But if I'm in a meeting where I'm just like, it's really nice. I just sit there and just like do do do. And sometimes I finish one of the sides. Is this the maglev nice. UV coated three by three? Speed Mine cube. is the Maglev Frosted, yeah, Frosted. Ma Maglev uh, Frosted, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From GAN, G-A-N. Yeah. Visit the GAN store. They got them all. I guess they've must... Yeah, they've th kind of... They've, they've, everybody's got their own flavor the of one. them. And, this yeah, is the one. These guys are the... It doesn't say um, Rubik's Cube. It just says Cube. Right, you know? right, because they can't. They can't. But, but, the, uh, but, but they, they have can, for beginners. They have smart yeah. cubing, advanced cubes. <laughs> yeah. And so we're... I have to admit, there's... Um, uh, it turns out that another member, uh, Grant uh, Whitehead in, in Australia, his son is really good, like really good at this. And and uh, and then Chris is Chris is really good too. So we, we've already decided there'll be some office hours, like after hours things of us like learning how to actually do this like a pro. So um, and we I had want a, one. Here's yeah. what I want. Maybe they'll make it with a little motor in it, so I can connect it to a USB port, so I can write a program. So it all gets. You know they do them. They they do them. They 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 have they have ones that manipulate this, and it's like a second, one point three seconds or something. Like yeah, that. Goes, somebody, I've seen no, it. Some, some somebody has made a self-contained, self-solving Rubik's cube with internal <laughs> That's motors, what I need. and it's and it looks. Uh, no, no. I've, I mean, you've seen all these robots that that, that do uh, that do the manipulation outside. This is like, no, you 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 mix it up. You put there you go. You put it on a table and it just solves itself. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, this was on Adam Savage's uh, tested uh, yeah. channel. That's how yeah. you know that, about it. Look that, at that. That's definitely like you 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 time travel back like a, a Connecticut Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court, but you time travel back to like the 1980s. If you like to set this thing down in 1980. Oh. On a table in lunchroom. That's how oh. you are a god. We will oh. follow you anywhere. Yeah, really. He's a sorcerer. <laughs> and there'll be an eclipse tomorrow at 3 p.m. Yes. Ah! How does he know it? That's really so cool. A self solving Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Holy camoly. There it is. Ew. We have a winner. Uh. Thank you, Alex. 
Great to have you. Thank you, Andy. Andy, when will, when will you be on GBH next? Uh, I'm off this week, but next week at 1230 on Friday, WGBHnews.org, or go to the Boston Public Library. You can watch it live. There's Frederick Van Johnson doing his review of the Panasonic GH6 on today's he came on officehours.global. Today. Yeah. Office yeah. Hours continues to be the most amazing. It's, it's, it's the equivalent of a self-solving Rubik's Cube for, <laughs> uh, for broadcast. It's well, incredible. And we had this, if you go back and look at the Saturday session, I think we have it, it might be up there. We built, this is, this is the, this is the beginning of the Saturday, our Saturday sessions. Uh, so this is our, so this is, we we built this, the system out of a pizza box. And so, um, what is it, it what does a, it do? So it's going to be, so we're, we're it's the, the function is for us to learn really how to program it. This is, a this is using the, the BBC micro micro bit. Um, into what's called a uh, maker bit, which is which basically unleashes the little micro bit, um, and so you've got this little, you know, it's, it's kind of like an Arduino, um, you know, it's, it's similar to that, yeah. except yeah. Uh, it's a little easier to program. And so, um, so anyway, so a bunch of us got together. We, we uh, Roger Wagner, who's been teaching this for a long time, uh, mostly the kids, but we, we're, we're big kids. Um, so he sent these to us, and we step by step went through building these all together. Um, and it's a little—it's going to be like a little tally light, and it can play thing, you know, push push things out. And we're going to program it next weekend. So we spent like three hours building this thing and wiring it together, but all together. So it's like it's like we're all sitting there. And what's funny is when you do it, look, we, when you have a whole bunch of people with multi camera, like it's so much more fun because there's there's Roger. And so when everybody has multiple cameras, it gets to be like a really fun thing to do because you're actually seeing what the other one are doing and what they're what what, what we're putting so together cool. and it, it, it it's was like the it world's like, best club it is uh, it is what and fun three three hours just evaporated for me like it was yeah. just like do 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 and we didn't stop we didn't take any breaks we were like we we're just kind of cooking through it and just having a great time and wow. uh, we're going to program it this this weekend we're going to program these and and then we'll keep on doing you know bigger projects with them but it's just a lot of a lot of microprocessor fun Alex, really I have an important cool. question. Are your members allowed to marry outside the group? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how you bring more people in. Okay, good, good, good. It's, it's, it's the just Iroquois checking. way. Every, it's the every, Iroquois every, way. You surround them and then you marry, 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 marry out and then you become part of the tribe. <laughs> every, every few months, I like to ask that question just to make sure yeah. that... <laughs> Officehours.global. And of course, if you want to hire Alex to do your next streaming event, 090.media. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Pleasure. Andy. Renee will be back next week, I hope, to tell us all he has learned from Apple. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why, it's almost like charging $10,000 in five minutes. <laughs> it's almost like being $10,000 in debt. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, very conveniently after the Apple events, as it turns out. Uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, Apple, for keeping it to 57 minutes. Uh, perfect timing. Uh, we also, uh, you can, which means you can watch us live if you want, uh, live.twit.tv. If you're watching live, chat with us live at irc.twit.tv. If you're a member of Club Twit, there's a Discord channel, <clears throat> not only for every show, but for every topic under the Sun Stacy's Book Club, the Untitled Linux Show, the Giz Fizz, This Week in Space. Uh, lots of good stuff going on in the club these days. I think at the end of the month, Paul Therott will be uh, our guest for a fireside chat with Aunt Pruitt. Uh, if you want to know more, just go to twit.tv slash club twit. $7 a month is all it costs to be a member of the club. You also get ad-free versions of all of our shows and a lot of additional content that doesn't make it to the podcasts. Twit.tv slash club twit. Thank you so much uh, for supporting us that way. It's great. After the fact, of course, we still offer everything we do on demand free at our website. In the case of uh, this show, it's twit.tv slash mbw. When you go there, you'll also see a link to the YouTube channel. All the shows have their own dedicated YouTube channel. Best way to get it, though, I think, really, would be uh, to get a podcast player and subscribe. That way you get it automatically the minute it's available. And you can leave us a five-star review, too, if you would. It helps spread the word about Mac Break Weekly. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll see you next week. And as for you, get back to work. Because you know what? Break time is over, and I got some ordering to do. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I'm joined by Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief over at Space.com. 
In our new This Week in Space podcast, every Friday, Tarek and I take a deep dive into the stories that define the new space age. What's NASA up to? When will Americans once again set foot on the moon? And how about those samples from the Perseverance rover? When are those coming home? What the heck has Elon Musk done now? In addition to all the latest and greatest in space exploration, we'll take an occasional look at bits of spaceflight history that you probably never heard of, and all with an eye towards having a good time along the way. Check us out in your favorite podcatcher. 